Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode of Anime Recap. Today, we will be going through the Bleach series and explain everything that happened. This will serve as a run through so that you can be up to speed since the new season is coming up in only few months now. Please note that we will only be going through the real storyline and will not be covering any filler arcs, meaning there will be only 6 arcs explained instead of 10. And so without any further ado, let's jump straight into the recap. Ichigo Kurosaki is a 15-year-old high school student with the ability to see spirits. As he tries to protect the spirit of a little girl from a hollow, he witnesses a clash between the malevolent spirit and a female soul reaper. Later, Ichigo is met by the same woman again in his room. She introduces herself as Rukia Kachiki, and explains to Ichigo the basic duty of the soul reapers is the act of soul cleansing. The hollow, named Fishbone D, returns to absorb Ichigo's high spiritual energy, attacking Ichigo's home, and Rukia is wounded. In order to save his family, Ichigo desperately takes Rukia's power into himself and becomes a soul reaper to successfully defeat the hollow. After discovering Rukia has enrolled in his class, Ichigo learns that she has lost her power and that he must pose as her substitute, until her powers can recover. Although he refuses this responsibility at first, Ichigo eventually accepts after realizing he cannot just turn a blind eye if he encounters a hollow again. Ichigo discovers that one of his classmates, Oriha Minoue, is being stalked by her older brother's spirit who turned into the hollow acid wire due to Oriheim stopping her prayers for him, which makes him hesitate to fulfill his duty. As Ichigo is forced to use his power again, his qualms of killing hollows are rested and he finally submits to his purpose as a substitute soul reaper, killing acid wire. Before he does so however, Oriheim's older brother was able to revert to his kind and gentle nature, expressing his love for her and thanking her before being sent to the Soul Society, the place where soul reapers and souls reside, via Ichigo's Zanpakuto. Ichigo's friend Yasutora, Chad, Sato comes into possession of a cursed cockatiel that is inhabited by the soul of a small boy, Yuichi Shibata, but supposed misfortune to anyone who possesses the cockatiel is due to a hollow named Shrieker who has been stalking the boy's soul. Chad is attacked by Shrieker before Rukia arrives to aid him. With Rukia's help, Chad fights Shrieker despite not being able to see him. Ichigo eventually arrives and defeats the Shrieker. But as Shrieker was originally a murderer in life, he is dragged through the gates of hell instead of dissolving into the Soul Society. The spirit that inhabited the cockatiel is released to move on to the Soul Society. In order for Ichigo to transform into a Soul Reaper when Rukia is not around, she purchases some Soul Candy from the Urahara shop for him. However, the candy is actually a Mod Soul, an artificial warrior from the Soul Society created to destroy Hollows. Once inside Ichigo's body, the Mod Soul goes on a rampage while ruining Ichigo's social image. Ichigo confronts the Mod Soul possessing his body, but is then distracted by an emerging Hollow. Together, they defeat the Hollow. When Kisuk Urahara, the merchant who sold Rukia her Jigai, comes for the defective merchandise, Ichigo takes the Mod Soul back and places him into a stuffed lion plushie while naming him Khan to get even with him wounding his shoulder. Meanwhile in the Soul Society, a Soul Reaper is sent to track down Rukia for retrieval. Ichigo and his family visit their mother's grave on the anniversary of her death. While there, the Soul Reaper sent to retrieve Rukia attacks them because she broke the Soul Society's laws by giving Ichigo her powers. The battle halts when Ichigo's sisters Karen and Yuzu are attacked by a huge hollow. Ichigo confronts the hollow, who is revealed as the Grand Fisher, the hollow who killed Ichigo's mother. In a fit of rage, Ichigo defeats the hollow as he escapes before he is killed. The Soul Reaper sent after Rukia leaves with a warning when he witnesses Ichigo's strength. When popular TV star slash spirit medium Don Kananji transforms a spirit into a hollow during an exorcism, Ichigo is forced to clean up the mess. Upon the hollow's defeat, Kananji is shocked to realize what he has done. 
With a little cheering up from Ichigo, Kananji is back to his old self again, and calls Ichigo, despite Ichigo's objections, his new apprentice. While on another hollow fighting mission, Ichigo encounters Yuriu Ishida, a classmate belonging to a clan known as the Quincy, humans that can use spiritual power to manifest a bow to fight hollows Yuriu declares himself an enemy of all soul reapers and challenges Ichigo to a competition of hunting hollows. The contest between Ichigo and Yuriu has lured hundreds of hollows into Karakura town, endangering many of Ichigo's friends. Chad is forced to fight a hollow in order to save Karen. During the battle, he is finally able to see the hollow clearly, and develops a new ability, an armored right arm capable of firing energy blasts called the right arm of the giant. The situation worsens as more hollows appear in the human world, attacking the school where Oriheim and her friends are. While defending them, Oriheim develops her own power, the Shun Shun Rika, a group of fairy-like creatures coming from the hairpins given to her by her brother, and defeats the hollow. Afterward, Yurahara takes in Oriheim and Chad to help them with their new powers while Rukia and Ichigo confront Yuriu. The Legion of Hollows force Ichigo and Yuriu to team up in combat while the others watch. A giant hollow called the Minos Grande arrives on the scene, and is driven away after Ichigo inflicts a wound assisted by power from Yuriu. However, he releases too much spiritual power in the process. The strain of his powers causes Ichigo to lose consciousness, and Yuriu saves him by releasing the excess energy through his bow. Tired of mistreatment from Ichigo, Khan runs away to find a better owner. But he finds his abuse continuing from girls due to his perverse nature. Ichigo makes an effort to befriend Yuriu but is rebuffed. Rukia becomes conflicted with her attachment with humans. Rather than endanger Ichigo, she runs away to face the newly arrived hunters from the Soul Society. Ichigo chases after Rukia only to encounter the two Soul Reapers pursuing her. Ichigo faces off against the Soul Reaper Lieutenant Renji Aburai. Renji triggers the Shirkai state of his Zanpakuto, overwhelming Ichigo with his strength. Ichigo makes a comeback against Renji, overpowering him with his enormous spirit energy. Just when Renji is about to fall, his commander Bayakuya Kuchiki, Rukia's brother, steps in and defeats Ichigo with overwhelming pace. Rukia returns to the Soul Society so that Ichigo can be spared death, and Ichigo is left dying with his power stripped from him. He is then saved by Urahara, who agrees to help him rescue Rukia, who faces the death penalty in the Soul Society. Ichigo, however, must agree to train with Urahara to regain his powers. As his last day of school ends, Ichigo is upset to discover that no one except for Oriheim, Chad and Yuriu seems to remember Rukia, due to a mind wipe imposed by the Soul Society. He begins his training at the Urahara shop, first battling the shop's girl assistant, Yururu Tsumujia to regain control of his spirit body. As the training enters stage 2, Ichigo's soul is cut from his body and thrown into a pit. He must regain his soul reaper powers within three days, or risk becoming a hollow. Meanwhile, Yoruchi Shihoin, a talking cat, offers to train Chad and Oriheim to control and enhance their powers so they can join Ichigo to go to the Soul Society and rescue Rukia. In the Soul Society, Rukia's sentence is moved up and she only has 25 days left. In the pit, Ichigo battles through the agony of the process of becoming a hollow. His transformation is almost complete as he enters his own mind, coming face to face with his inner spirit, Zangetsu, who helps him unleash the soul reaper powers he was born with. In a powerful display, Ichigo emerges from the pit with his soul reaper uniform on, wearing the mask of a hollow. Breaking the mask off, Ichigo enters the next stage of his training, that is to fight Urahara. While fighting Urahara, Ichigo learns that Zangetsu is the name of his Zanpakuto. Upon learning the name, the sword transforms into its more powerful Shirkai form as Ichigo unleashes an energy blast which knocks off Urahara's hat, completing the third stage in his training. Oriheim and Chad, meanwhile, 
finished their training with Yorochi. The entire group, including Yuryu, who has been training alone, set out for the Soul Society using a gate that Yorochi and Yurahara made. Ichigo Kurosaki, Yuryu Ishida, Orihai Minoue, Yasutora, Chad, Sado and Yorochi Shihoin cross over into the Soul Society using the gate. They arrive in the Rukon district, where normal spirits reside. Ichigo quickly finds himself in a battle with the gatekeeper Jidanbo when he carelessly tries to enter the Siriidei, where the Soul Reapers reside. Thanks to Yurahara's training, Ichigo easily defeats Jidanbo, but when Jidanbo opens the gate in defeat, Ichigo encounters the Squad 3 Captain Jin Ikimaru. Ikimaru uses his Shurkai and pushes Ichigo back through the gate. After being shot out of the Siriidei by Ikimaru, Ichigo and his friends must find another way in. While searching for a friend of Yoruchi's who supposedly can help, Ichigo meets Ganju Shiba, a man who claims to be the number one hater of soul reapers of the west part of the Rukon district. The two hate each other immediately and begin to brawl, but their battle ends abruptly when the clock on the back of one of Ganju's friends goes off. Ganju and his friends leave immediately. Yoruchi solicits the help of Ganju's sister, Kukaku Shiba, who agrees to send them into the Siriidei using her fireworks cannon. Meanwhile, Rukia's sentence has been moved to 14 days, and she is transferred into a cell called the Shrine of Penitence. Meanwhile, an emergency meeting is called among all the captains of the 13 court guard squads. In order to use the cannon to enter the Siriidei, Ichigo and his friends must first learn how to focus their spiritual energies in order to use an item called a spirit orb, a task Ichigo finds especially difficult. He finally succeeds with the help of Ganju and creates the shell he will need to ride the cannon. Within the Siriidei a meeting of all the captains in the 13 court guard squads is held to discuss how to deal with the invaders. The meeting is interrupted by an alarm, indicating that someone has infiltrated the Siriidei. Before the group launches into the Siriidei, Ganju reveals that the reason he hates Soul Reapers is because his brother was killed by one. In the Siriidei, the Squad 11 captain, Kenpachi Zaraki, sets out to hunt Ichigo, believing him to be a worthy opponent. Meanwhile, Squad 5 captain Sosuke Aizen confronts Ikimaru in front of the Squad 10 captain Toshiro Hitsugaya about his flimsy excuse for allowing the invaders to escape, causing Hitsugaya to suspect that Ikimaru is planning something. As the crew passes through the shield surrounding the Siriidei, Ichigo's inability to control his spiritual energy results in the shell exploding, separating the group. Ichigo lands with Ganju and Yuryu with Orihime, while Chad and Yoruchi are alone. Ichigo and Ganju encounter and fight squad 11 members, 3rd seat Ikiku Matarem and 5th seat Yumichika Ayasegawa respectively. Ikiku gains an advantage by using the Shirkai of his Zanpakuto to fight Ichigo while Ganju attempts to escape from Yumichika using a series of tricks and fireworks he borrowed from his sister. Ichigo eventually overpowers Ikiku, although he is injured in the process. Ganju and Yumichika continue their fight, with Yumichika pursuing Ganju throughout the Siriidei. Kenpachi continues to search for Ichigo, but is lost, thanks to the poor directions of his lieutenant, Yachiru Kusajishi. Ganju manages to defeat Yumichika by exploding fireworks on his face. Meanwhile, Yuryu and Oriheim are confronted by Jirobo Ikenzaka, the fourth seat of Squad 7. Yuryu is easily able to destroy the projectiles he sends at them, and destroys his ability to be a soul reaper when he threatens Oriheim. Meanwhile, the Squad 12 captain, Mayuri Kuratsuchi, dispatches teams of soul reapers to locate the intruders as he wishes to use them as his test subjects for his horrifying experiments. Ichigo and Ganju attempt to escape the soul reapers following them by using Hanataro Yamada, a Squad 4 officer, as a distraction. They fail, but the Soul Reapers are distracted by Chad's energy blasts elsewhere, enabling them to escape. Hanataro then promises to take Ichigo and Ganju to Rukia as he is a friend of hers too. 
Kenpachi is still attempting to find Ichigo, but Yachiru's directions are leading him in the opposite direction. With Hanataro's help, Ichigo and Ganju begin to head towards Rukia's location. However, Renji confronts them. Ichigo begins to fight him, and Renji reveals that he is five times more powerful than when they fought previously as Soul Reapers have limits placed on their powers when they go to the world of the living. Ichigo and Renji fight viciously, with Renji initially gaining the advantage. However, Ichigo reflects on his training with Urahara, and uses his resolve to fire a blast of spiritual energy at Renji, defeating him. Renji reflects on his past with Rukia, remembering how they were childhood friends, and how they joined the Soul Reaper Academy together. However, they steadily grew more separated, and he stopped interfering with her after she was adopted by the Kachiki clan. After reminiscing, he begs Ichigo to save her. Hanataro and Ganju carry Ichigo away as the Soul Reapers arrive and Hanataro begins to heal Ichigo in the tunnels. Renji, despite being heavily injured, is incarcerated on the orders of his captain, Bayakuya Kachiki. Meanwhile, the head captain of the Soul Reapers Genryusai Yamamoto commands all-out war against the intruders. As Squad 5 Lieutenant Momo Hinamori travels to a meeting of lieutenants the following day, she finds Aizen's body, hanging from a tower. Believing that Ikamaru murdered Aizen, Hinamori attacks him, but is stopped by Squad 3 Lieutenant Izuru Kira. Hitsugaya stops their fight, and orders both to be incarcerated. He then promises to kill Ikamaru if he harms Hinamori in any way. Chad continues through the Suriidei, but the Squad 8 captain, Shunsuei Kairaku, decides to stop him. Ichigo, Ganju and Hanataro travel towards Rukia's prison, but are immobilized by Kenpachi's immense spiritual force. The Squad 10 Lieutenant, Ranjiku Matsumoto, gives Hinamori a letter from Aizen, which discloses the true identity of his murderer. Meanwhile, Ichigo begins to fight Kenpachi. However, Kenpachi's spiritual energy is so great that Ichigo cannot even cut him. As Chad continues through the Soul Society, he encounters members of Squad 8. He manages to defeat them all until Kairaku confronts him. Although Chad is determined to win to uphold his promise to Ichigo, Kairaku easily, albeit regretfully, defeats him. Rather than kill him, Kairaku orders Chad to be incarcerated. Elsewhere, Ichigo is fleeing Kenpachi, terrified of Kenpachi's overwhelming power. After realizing the importance of his mission, however, Ichigo finds the resolve to face him. He manages to cut Kenpachi, but becomes overconfident after learning that Kenpachi has not mastered his Zanpakuto. Kenpachi then stabs him in the chest, breaking Ichigo's Zanpakuto in the process. Zangetsu, the spirit of Ichigo's Zanpakuto, brings Ichigo into his world. Through fighting a hollow version of himself, Ichigo realizes that Zanpakuto are more than mere tools, and that simply knowing name of his Zanpakuto does not make him more powerful. Ichigo is then able to fight Kenpachi on equal footing, and as the two clash in a massive strike, Ichigo collapses. Kenpachi falls down beside Ichigo in defeat, and Yachiru takes him away for medical treatment. Yoruchi also retrieves Ichigo for medical treatment. Meanwhile, Ganju and Hanataro arrive at Rukia's cell, but Ganju becomes infuriated because he believes Rukia was the killer of his brother, Kain Shiba. However, in the end, Bayakuya arrives, and Ganju decides to fight him despite the vast difference in their powers. As Ichigo awakens, Yoruchi reveals that she is actually a woman. Afterwards, Yoruchi shows Ichigo a device that allowed her to fly, and Ichigo uses it to go save Ganju and Hanataro. Meanwhile, Bayakuya easily defeats Ganju with his Shirkai, but is then stopped by the 13th Division Captain, Jushiro Yukitake. Ichigo arrives and fights Bayakuya. Before Bayakuya can activate his Shirkai, Yoruchi stops him. As Renji Aburai recovers in his cell, 
the spirit of his Zanpakuto Zabamaru says that he wishes to face Ichigo Kurosaki Zanpakuto Zangetsu again, but Renji tells him that Ichigo is no longer his enemy. Elsewhere, Yoruchi Shihoin manages to evade Bayakuya Kuchiki and escape with Ichigo. After Ichigo regains consciousness, she begins to instruct him in the use of his Bankai, the final stage of his Zanpakuto that would vastly increase his power. Orihai Minoue and Yuriu Ishida are attempting to travel to Rukia Kachiki's cell by using Soul Reaper clothes, but they are closely watched by 12th Division Captain Mayuri Kuratsuchi. Orihai and Yuriu continue towards Rukia's location, but are accosted by Makizo Aramaki, a Soul Reaper of the 11th Division. Some 12th Division members arrive to help, but Mayuri, who has made them into human bombs, detonates them. Oriheim uses her powers to protect Yuriu and herself from the explosions, and Mayuri expresses his wish to experiment on Oriheim. Yuriu begins to fight Mayuri, but is quickly disabled by the paralyzing abilities of Mayuri's Zanpakuto when his lieutenant, Ninyu Kuratsuchi, uses her body to hold down Yuriu. Mayuri then reveals that he has experimented on many other Quincy, including Yuriu's grandfather, Sokan Ishida, and was responsible for his death. Yuriu uses the Quincy technique Rantsutengai to overcome the paralysis of Mayuri's Zanpakuto. However, he is outclassed by Mayuri, and is forced to take off his Sanrei glove, an act that releases the limits on his powers. Yuriu proceeds to completely overwhelm Mayuri, even after Mayuri releases his Bankai, but Mayuri escapes by transforming into a liquid. Ninyu gives Yuriu the antidote to the poison of Mayuri's Bankai, and Yuriu continues on towards Rukia's cell, severely weakened, until he is confronted by another Soul Reaper captain, Kanaim Tozen. Tozen disables Yuriu instantly with his Zanpakuto, and has him incarcerated. Yoruchi summons Zangetsu using a Ten Shintai, one of Kisuk Urahara's inventions. Zangetsu states that if Ichigo defeats him, he will be able to perform his Bankai, and will be slain if he fails. Elsewhere, Hanataro Yamada is admonished by his captain, Retsu Uno Hana, for helping Ichigo, Renji breaks out of his prison cell, 3rd Division Captain Jin Ikimaru releases his lieutenant, Izuru Kira, from his imprisonment, and 11th Division Captain Kenpachi Zaraki agrees to help Oriheim find Ichigo in order to fight Ichigo again. Yoruchi notes that Ichigo's training for his Bankai is going well and stops the training for the day. She reveals in their subsequent conversation that Kisuk Urahara used to be the 12th division captain. Elsewhere, Toshiro Hitsugaya confronts Ikamaru and Kira over Aizen's murder, but is interrupted by Hinamori, who believes that Hitsugaya killed Aizen. Hitsugaya knocks Hinamori unconscious and prepares to kill Ikamaru. Hitsugaya and Ikimaru begin to fight, and Ikimaru initially takes the upper hand with his swordplay. Hitsugaya turns the tables by using the Shukai of his Zanpakuto to immobilize Ikimaru by freezing his arm, but this advantage is countered when Ikimaru uses his own Shukai to threaten the unconscious Hinamori. 10th Division Lieutenant Ranjiku Matsumoto arrives to aid Hinamori and Hitsugaya, and Ikimaru withdraws rather than go against her. Meanwhile, Renji arrives at Ichigo's training spot and reveals that Rukia's execution date has been moved to the next day. Kenpachi, along with Oriheim and his subordinates, begins to travel to the execution grounds, but are confronted by Captain Sajin Kamamura and Tozen, with their respective lieutenants, Tetsuzeman Iba and Shuhei Hiseja. Ikiku Madareim and Yumachika Ayasegawa, Kenpachi's subordinates, begin fights with Iba and Hisagi respectively, and Kamamura and Tozen attack Kenpachi. Elsewhere, Renji has acquired his Bankai, and Yoruchi is confident that Ichigo will do the same. Renji travels to Rukia's execution area, and meets his captain Bayakuya along the way. Renji ends up using his Bankai to fight Bayakuya, but his lack of experience with his Bankai stymies his efforts. Bayakuya uses his Shukai to try and counterattack but fails and Renji reveals that his Bankai is held together by his spiritual pressure. Bayakuya uses his own Bankai and attacks again, 
wounding Renji and causes his Bankai to fade away. Finally Renji makes a last try and actually reaches his captain with his Zanpakuto, but it breaks and Renji's wounds cause him to fall as the captain congratulates him. As Rukia travels to the execution area, Ikamaru shatters her resolve by offering to help her, but subsequently claiming that his offer was insincere to begin with. Kenpachi is easily battling both Kamamura and Tozen, forcing Tozen to use his Bankai, which removes all of Kenpachi's senses with the exception of his sense of touch. Despite being unable to see Tozen, Kenpachi manages to locate and injure Tozen, but is stopped from killing him by Kamamura. Kamamura activates his Bankai and engages Kenpachi. Meanwhile, Rukia arrives at the execution grounds. Rukia has accepted her execution, and gives a request to 1st Division Captain Genryusai Shigakuni Yamamoto to send Ichigo and his friends home after her execution. The Sokayaku, a massive halberd that transforms into a phoenix, is the execution method. However, Ichigo steps forward and stops the Sokayaku with his sword, and sympathetic captains Shunsue Kairaku and Jushiro Yukitake destroy the Sokayaku. As Renji arrives to take away Rukia, Ichigo defeats three pursuing lieutenants with his bare hands, and turns to face Bayakuya. Bayakuya begins to fight Ichigo, and promises to execute Rukia himself. Unohana personally heals all of the injured present, then leaves to investigate another location. Kairaku and Yukitake also sprint from the execution grounds, and the pair confront Yamamoto in a secluded area. In an overwhelming display, Yamamoto activates his Shirkai and incinerates the surrounding area. Yumichika returns to his captain after defeating Hisagi, and Kenpachi remarks that Kamamura fled after Yamamoto began fighting. Kairaku and Yukitake decide to fight their teacher, and both use the Shirkai of their Zanpakuto. Meanwhile, 2nd Division Captain Suifong begins to fight Yoruchi, her former commander and teacher, and gains the advantage after she begins using her Shirkai. Believing she has the advantage, Suifong activates a nameless technique she recently discovered which greatly increases her power. However, Yoruchi activates the same technique, calling it, Shunko. Suifong recalls her past with Yoruchi. She was Yoruchi's personal guard, and highly faithful to her. However, when Yoruchi left the Soul Society, she felt betrayed, and carried a grudge against her mentor from that point forward. As Suifong attacks, Yoruchi uses her Shunko to block all of Suifong's attacks. Suifong breaks down in tears, asking Yoruchi why she did not take her along when she left the Soul Society. Ikiku and Iba are fighting, albeit casually for sake. Near the execution site, Ichigo uses his newly learned Getsuga Tensho technique to defeat Bayakuya's Shirkai and requests that Bayakuya use his Bankai. Bayakuya uses his Bankai and overwhelms Ichigo with millions of tiny blades. In response, Ichigo uses his own Bankai, which makes him incredibly fast. Ichigo evades Bayakuya's Bankai and stabs him with his sword. Meanwhile, Toshiro Hitsugaya and Ranjiku Matsumoto head to the Central 46 Chambers, the highest authority in the Soul Society. Bayakuya uses the second form of his Bankai, summoning several rows of swords. As he and Ichigo continue to fight, Ichigo becomes progressively weaker as the strain from his Bankai increases. His inner hollow takes over his body after Bayakuya wounds him, and he starts to overwhelm Bayakuya. However, Ichigo manages to suppress his inner hollow, and regains control over his body. Both Ichigo and Bayakuya focus the remainder of their powers and clash in a final strike, with Ichigo the victor. Bayakuya reveals that he would allow Rukia to be executed because he values the law above her life, once a criminal's punishment has been decided it must be carried out, and admits defeat, claiming that Ichigo has convinced him not to execute Rukia. Elsewhere, Hitsugaya and Matsumoto enter the Central 46 Chambers. Hitsugaya and Matsumoto enter the Central 46 Chambers to find all of its occupants slain. 
Kira arrives, and Hitsugaya and Matsumoto pursue him. Hitsugaya returns when Kira tells him that Hinamori has entered the central 46 chambers. Ikimaru meets Hinamori and takes her further into the chambers, where she is reunited with Aizen. Aizen impales Hinamori with his sword, and Aizen and Ikimaru leave the chamber. Hitsugaya arrives, and is enraged at Hinamori's state. He uses his Bankai, but Aizen effortlessly defeats him. Unohana appears, denouncing Aizen after discovering that he is a traitor. Aizen then informs her that every Soul Reaper has been under the hypnosis of his Zanpakuto, with the exception of the blind Tozen, Aizen's other accomplice. At Unohana's command, Aizen Kotetsu informs all high-ranking members of the 13 court guard squads of Aizen's duplicity. Aizen arrives at Rukia's execution site, where Tozen has brought Rukia and Rinji. When Aizen asks Rinji to leave Rukia, he refuses and begins to fight Aizen. Ichigo also arrives, and the two fight in unison against Aizen. Aizen defeats both of them, and begins to explain his reasons for betraying the Soul Society until he is interrupted by Kamamura. Aizen defeats Kamamura with an extremely powerful Kido spell and continues his explanation by revealing he arranged Rukia's execution to obtain the Hogyoku, an orb that would allow him to gain hollow powers that was hidden in Rukia's Jigai by Yurahara. After extracting the Hogyoku from her body, Aizen orders Ikimaru to kill Rukia before Bayakuya saves her as the majority of the 13 court guard squads then arrive to restrain Aizen. But Aizen and his accomplices use several hollows to escape into the hollows world Hueco Mundo. Afterwards, as Bayakuya recovers, he explains to Rukia that he married her sister, Hizana, and adopted Rukia into the Kachiki clan as Hizana's dying wish. But explaining that as he promised his parents to uphold the law without question as he broke his clan's rules in adopting her, Bayakuya admits that he was conflicted between following the rules and allowing Rukia's execution or breaking them to save her. Ichigo and his friends return to the human world. However, Rukia decides to remain in the Soul Society rather than leave with Ichigo. In Hueco Mundo, the Hollow Grand Fisher transforms into an imperfect Aaron car and enters the real world. Meanwhile, Shinji Hirako enrolls at Ichigo Kurosaki's school. During a routine purification of hollows, Ichigo is confronted by Hirako, who shows that he can willingly produce a hollow mask similar to what Ichigo has done unconsciously. He asks Ichigo to join his group, the Wizards. At the same time, Khan, in Ichigo's body, is attacked by Grand Fisher, and Yuryu Ishida is attacked by a pair of hollows Yuryu is rescued by his father, Ryukan Ishida, who reveals that he is a Quincy. After rescuing his son from the Eren car attacking him, Ryukan offers Yuryu the opportunity to restore his powers on the condition he never associates with Soul Reapers. Khan continues to flee from the Grand Fisher. Despite receiving help from Liren, Kurodo and Noba, he is still caught. Ishin Kurosaki, Ichigo's father, arrives to save him. Ichigo and Hirako recognize a new presence, and neither can identify that it is Ishin. Before leaving, Ichigo declines Hirako's invitation. The Grand Fisher draws his Zanpakuto, transforming into a stronger state, and Ishin, identifying the Grand Fisher as an Erenkar, kills him in a single attack, avenging his wife. Kisuk Urahara appears and converses with Ishin about the Erenkar under the command of former Soul Reaper Captain Sosuke Aizen, the Wizards, and explains that the Hogyoku will take a year to be fully awakened. At school, Hirako asks Ichigo again to join the Wizards, explaining that Ichigo's inner hollow will overwhelm him if he does not. Later, Hirako is confronted by Hayori Saragaki, another Wizard who berates him concerning his lack of success in recruiting Ichigo. Orihai Minoue and Yasutora, Chad, Sato confront Hirako and Hayori, and Hirako takes Hayori away before she can kill Orihai and Chad. Elsewhere, Yuryu agrees to Ryukin's proposal. After his discussion with Hirako, Ichigo realizes that his inner hollow is indeed becoming more than he can control. 
At home, the voice of his inner hollow taunts him, saying that he will come closer and closer to him until he takes over his body. Meanwhile, two errand cars, Yami Rialgo and Okuyora Schiffer arrive in Karakura town, and Yami begins to consume the souls of all the humans in the area. Oriheim and Chad arrive, and both are easily defeated by Yami. As he attempts a killing blow against Oriheim, Ichigo arrives to block the attack. Ichigo uses his Bankai, and Okuyora identifies him as the target Aizen sent them to investigate. Ichigo begins to battle Yami, blocking Yami's first attack and subsequently cutting off his arm. However, his inner hollow interferes, and Yami gains the advantage. Urahara and Yoruchi Shihoin arrive, and Yami is easily beaten by both of them. Okuyora rescues him from an attack from Urahara, and the two return to Hueco Mundo. At Ichigo's school, Ichigo meets a team of soul reapers consisting of Rinji Aburai, Toshiro Hitsugaya, Ranjiku Matsumoto, Ikiku Matarain, Yumichika Ayasegawa and Rukia Kuchiki dispatched to help Ichigo against the Arankar threats. After greeting the team, Ichigo is taken by Rukia to fight a hollow. While Ichigo fights the hollow, Rukia berates his inability to defend his friends, and encourages him to fight his inner hollow. Inspired, Ichigo easily defeats the hollow, and Rukia takes him to Oriheim to apologize for not protecting her against the Arankar. At Ichigo's house, Hitsugaya explains Aizen's plans for the Arankars and the different types of hollows. In Hueco Mundo, Okuyora and Yami report their findings in the real world to Aizen and an assembly of Arankar. Okuyora and Yami are debriefed by Aizen and the other Arankars. Grimjow Jagerjax questions Okuyora's decision to keep Ichigo alive, and Aizen asserts that he trusts Okuyora's judgment, angering Grimjow. Grimjow takes a group of five Arankars, Shalong Tsufang, Edorad Leones, Ilford Grants, Nakim Green Dina and Deroy Linker, to kill any being with spiritual power in Karakura town. Grimjow's five Arankars separate to attack their targets. Deroy encounters Chad and nearly kills him before Ichigo intercepts the fatal blow. Rukia arrives, telling Ichigo to allow her to fight Deroy. Using the Shukai of her Zanpakuto, she easily defeats Deroy. However, Grimjow arrives to fight them, and Rukia realizes that his power is vastly superior to Deroy's. Meanwhile, Kigo Asano encounters Ikiku fighting Edo Rad. Ikiku fights Edo Rad, who is forced to release his Zanpakuto after failing to counter Ikiku's unorthodox fighting style. In his released form, Edo Rad easily overpowers Ikiku, and Ikiku uses his Bankai. Meanwhile, Grinjao dispatches Rukia in a single blow, and prepares to fight Ichigo. Ikiku lands several blows on Edo Rad, and the two use all their power in a final attack. Ikiku recalls his first encounter with Kenpachi Zaraki when he was a vagrant in the Rukongai. Kenpachi easily defeated him, and told Ikiku to consider a respite from death after a fight as luck. After learning that Kenpachi joined the 13 court guard squads as a captain, Ikiku and Yumichika joined Kenpachi's division. When Rinji was a member of the 11th division, Ikiku trained him, and Rinji asked Ikiku to become a captain after discovering that Ikiku could use his Bankai. Ikiku refused, citing his desire to fight and die under Kenpachi's command. In the present, Ikiku defeats Edo Rad, and Yumichika congratulates him on his victory. Hitsugaya fights Shaolong, who overpowers him even though he is using his Bankai. Rinji, also using his Bankai, is outmatched against Ilford. Elsewhere, Ichigo begins to fight Grimjow, who encourages Ichigo to use his Bankai. Ilford and Shaolong release their Zanpakuto, and Shaolong explains the ranking structure of the Arankars to Hitsugaya. Afterwards, Ranjiku receives confirmation from the Soul Society that they have been granted permission to lift their power limits, and Hitsugaya, Ranjiku, and Renji do so. With their power limits lifted, Hitsugaya, Ranjiku and Renji easily dispatch their opponents. 
Meanwhile, Ichigo is overpowered by Grimjow, who is able to fight against Ichigo barehanded. Ichigo uses his Getsuga Tensho, which slightly damages Grimjow and awakens his inner hollow. Before Grimjow can release his Zanpakuto, Kanaim Tozen arrives. Tozen takes Grimjow back to Hueco Mundo, claiming that he violated Aizen's orders by attacking the real world. Grimjow is taken back to Hueco Mundo by Kanaim Tozen, who asks Aizen for permission to execute Grimjow. When Aizen denies his request, Tozen slices off Grimjow's arm and incinerates it. However, in a later conversation with Jin Ikimaru, it is implied that Aizen had planned for it to happen. In the real world, Ichigo attempts to find the Visors, realizing that his inner hollow has become too powerful to control. Meanwhile, Ishida trains with his father under the Karakura Hospital and Chad requests that Urahara train him. Ichigo finds the Visors, and fights Hirako, believing he can force Hirako to tell him how to control his inner hollow. Hayori stops the battle, and dons her hollow mask to fight Ichigo. With her hollow mask, Hayori overpowers Ichigo, who is unwilling to use either his hollow mask or his bankai. Ichigo's inner hollow surfaces, and the other wizards restrain him before he can harm Hayori. Hirako gives Ichigo an exercise to assess how much spiritual energy he has. However, after Ichigo proves that he has enough spiritual energy, Hirako explains that he must force his inner hollow into the core of his soul. Hirako renders Ichigo unconscious, and as Ichigo battles his inner hollow in his internal world, his body in the real world begins to transform into a hollow. After a conversation with a manifestation of Kenpachi Zaraki, Ichigo is able to steal his sword of the hollow and impale him with it, and gains control over his inner hollow. Elsewhere, 1st Division Captain Genryusai Shigekuni Yamamoto speaks with Hitsugaya concerning Aizen's objective, desiring to use 100,000 human souls in Karakura town to create a key to the dimension the King of the Soul Society lives in and overthrow the King. At Urahara's shop, Chad is training by fighting against Renji's Bankai as training, and Yuryu is training by fighting his father under Karakura Hospital. Meanwhile, Yamamoto tells Hitsugaya that Lt. Momo Hinamori wishes to speak with him. Hinamori appears to still be in a trance, believing that Aizen is innocent and urges Hitsugaya to save him, which angers him. Throughout the town, various training sessions are taking place, Ichigo is training with Hayori to lengthen the time he can use his hollow mask, Chad is training with Rinji to make his arm stronger, and Yuryu is training with Ryukin to regain his powers. Meanwhile, Oriheim tracks down Ichigo to inform him of Aizen's plans. This comes as a surprise to the other wizards. As she passes through the barrier with no effort. In his battle with Ryukin, Yuryu finally loses his patience and goes on the attack, only to be shot through the chest. A pentacle-shaped scar forms at the point of contact, and Ryukin informs Yuryu that his powers have been restored. With Oriheim's attack spirit Tsubaki destroyed by Yami, Urahara tells Oriheim that he does not want her to participate in the upcoming battle against the Arankar. Oriheim is saddened by the decision, but understands it. After being taken back to the wizards by Hayori, however, the wizard Hachijin, Hachi, Ashoda is able to restore Tsubaki. Meanwhile, Yami has his arm reattached by an Arankar surgeon, and Okuyora explains that Grimjow lost his rank as an Espada when he lost his arm. Yami is revealed to be the 10th Espada. Meanwhile Aizen becomes interested in Oriheim's powers. In Hueco Mundo, an Arankar named Patras and his two subordinates steal the Orb of Distortion, and kill Espada Okuyora Schiffer in the process. Unwilling to continue taking orders from former Soul Reaper Sosuke Aizen, Patras wishes to use the Orb of Distortion to take control of Las Noches. To this end, he heads for the shop of Kisuk Urahara, as he believes someone in the shop knows how to use the Orb. Patras begins to fight Rinji, who is staying at Urahara's shop. Meanwhile, the other Soul Reapers fight Patras' subordinates. 
As the two sides battle, Okuyora appears in the real world with no signs of his previous injuries. In Hueco Mundo, Okuyora's staged death and the theft of the Orb of Distortion are revealed to be a ploy by Aizen, engineered using his illusion casting Zanpakuto. In the real world, Patra's subordinates are defeated, and Renji uses his Bankai, forcing Patras to release his Zanpakuto. Patras begins to overwhelm Renji and reveals the secret of his attacks to the modified Soul Lirin. Lirin, Kurodo and Noba prevent Patras from using his attacks, and Renji defeats him. Meanwhile, Okuyora delivers a report to Aizen, noting that Orihime Inoue is currently not in the real world. In Hueco Mundo, Aizen creates the Arankar Wonderweiss Marjora with the Orb of Distortion, and Aizen tasks Okuyora with gathering Arankars for a mission. Meanwhile, Ichigo's training with the Wizards has enabled him to use his Hollow Mask for 11 seconds. In Soul Society, Soul Reapers Jushiro Yukitake and Shuhei Hisejai observe Oriheim and Rukia Kachiki, who are training for the Winter War with Aizen. In the real world, Yumichika and Ranjiku are training in an attempt to achieve Bankai when the Arankar's Luppy Antenna, Grimjow Jagerjax, Yami Rialgo and Wonderwise attack. Ichigo encounters Grimjow and uses his Bankai. In the training room beneath the Urahara shop, Urahara prepares to leave to enter the battle. Ichigo dons his hollow mask, and overwhelms Grimjow with his enhanced power. However, Ichigo is unable to defeat Grimjow in his 11 second limit, and Grimjow takes the advantage. Meanwhile, Itsugaya battles Yami, and Luffy demands that Yami retreat so he can fight all the Soul Reapers present. Luffy releases his Zanpakuto, sprouting eight tentacles from his back, and after knocking Hitsugaya into the ground, captures all of the Soul Reapers. Before he can dispatch Ranjiku, Urahara arrives, cutting one of his tentacles, and begins to fight Yami. In Soul Society, as Oriheim crosses into the real world, Okuyora attacks her. He severely injures her Soul Reaper guards and demands that she leave with him or he will kill all her friends. As the battle with Luppy continues, Hitsugaya uses a sneak attack with his Bankai and defeats Luppy. Meanwhile, Urahara dodges Yami's attacks using one of his inventions, and subsequently nullifies all of them. Grimjow nearly kills Ichigo, but is saved by Rukia. She is nearly killed, but Shinji Hirako saves her. Grimjow begins to battle Hirako, and after Hirako dons his hollow mask, he overwhelms Grimjow. As Grimjow prepares to release his Zanpakuto, Okuyora stops him and orders all the Arankars to return to Hueco Mundo in a notebook, Goodbye, Halcyon Days. Tatsuki discovers that Oriheim is missing following the attack by the Arankars. Because she had time to heal, as Oriheim agreed to accompany him. Okuyora gives Oriheim 12 hours to say goodbye to one person, and provides her with a bracelet that makes her invisible. Oriheim travels through Karakura town, watching her friends from a distance. She then sees Grimjow inflicted on him. She makes a confession of her love to the sleeping Ichigo. She almost kisses him but cannot bring herself to do it. Before leaving the real world, she writes a line to Ichigo before departing, Captain Genryusai Shigakuni Yamamoto assumes that she is a traitor who left of her own volition, and refuses any attempt to rescue her. Meanwhile, Tatsuki Arisawa questions Ichigo concerning Oriheim's disappearance, and Ichigo tells her that it is none of her concern. Ichigo, unwilling to abandon Oriheim, turns to Urahara for help, and is joined by Yuryu Ishida and Yasutora, Chad, Sado. After being brought before Aizen, Oriheim is asked to demonstrate her power by restoring Grimjow's arm. After doing so, Grimjow asks her to restore his tattoo. Following this, he kills Luppy to regain his rank among the Espadas. Although she is worried that her actions will only cause more fighting, Oriheim resolves to make herself useful until the Soul Society has prepared for the upcoming war. Meanwhile, Ichigo, Yuryu and Chad enter Hueco Mundo with Urahara's aid. In the real world, 
Ishin Kurosaki meets with Ryukin Ishida in the training chamber underneath the latter's hospital, where they discuss how they raised their respective sons. After arriving in Hueco Mundo, Ichigo, Yuryu, and Chad traverse the halls of an unknown structure. After setting off several traps, they are greeted by Demora and Iseringer, two Erenkar under Aizen's command. Yuryu and Chad insist that Ichigo watch them fight, and they overpower the Erenkars, showing their new abilities in the process. With the two Erenkars defeated, the room collapses, forcing Ichigo, Yuryu and Chad to escape outside. Upon seeing Lost No Chase, they begin running towards it, impeded by the various natural hazards of the desert. Meanwhile, Aizen gathers the Espadas to inform them of the intrusion, stressing that the intruders are not to be underestimated, but not to be considered an immediate threat. In the desert, Ichigo, Yuryu and Chad encounter three hollows chasing a human child, and decide to help the child. Ichigo learns that the human child is an Erenkar named Neliel II Odershvank. The three hollows are her brothers Peshkwatish and Dondachaka Bilston, and their pet Bawabua. Afterwards, a hollow named Lunaganga attacks the group, and they are unable to harm him because his body is made of sand. They are saved by Renji and Rukia, who freezes Lunaganga with her Shirkai. Nell offers to take the whole group to Lost No Chase. Before they can reach Lost No Chase, Lunaganga rises from the sands again. Lunaganga sinks the group beneath the sands, and Rukia is separated from the group. Nell explains that they are in the forest of Minos, where most hollows reside. As they begin to fight the hollows around them, Rukia attempts to fight the hollows attacking her. Attack of the Ajuchas, and Rukia kills the Ajuchas. She is rescued by Soul Reaper Ashido Kano, who attacks her after dispatching all of the hollows. Meanwhile, Nell, Pesh and Dondachaka are kidnapped by a hollow during an attack. Ashido reveals that his attack was a test of her strength, and he decides to take her back to her friends. Along the way, he relates his past to Rukia, explaining that he was part of a unit which hunts hollows that inadvertently came to Hueco Mundo. They are attacked by an Ajuchas. Meanwhile, Nell and her friends are held captive by the other Ajuchas, and Ichigo, Yuryu, Chad and Rinji are searching the area for them. Rukia and Ashido easily destroy the first Ajuchas, and another Ajuchas prepares up an ambush, in which Ashido is hit while trying to protect Rukia. Ashido's mask absorbs the brunt of the Ajuchas. Meanwhile, Ichigo and the others locate Nell and are led into an ambush. However, they defeat all of the Hollows present. Elsewhere, Rukia and Ashido defeat another Ajuchas, and everyone is subsequently reunited. As Ashido attempts to lead them out of the forest, an attack by one of the remaining Ajuchas collapses the passage. Ashido leaves to fight the Ajuchas as the rest of the group returns to the surface. As she leaves, Rukia promises to return for him. In Lost No Chase, Ulquiora informs Oriheim that her friends have mounted a rescue. After breaking into Lost No Chase and finding themselves at a five-way fork, Ichigo's group splits up and each takes one path. When Nell chases after Ichigo, Pesh and Dondachaka forget the direction she took and travel down different paths. Meanwhile, Ulquiora makes Oriheim swear her loyalty to Aizen. Afterwards, he explains to Espada Neutra Gilga the psychological traps Aizen created to ensure that Oriheim does not have the will to resist. However, Oriheim quietly resolves to destroy the Orb of Distortion by erasing its existence, an act that would derail all of Aizen's plans. Ichigo and Nell encounter the Privaran Espada Dordonii Alessandro del Sacacchio, and Ichigo begins to battle him. Yuryu and Chad each encounter an Erenkar, and former Soul Reaper Captains Jin Ikamaru and Kanaim Tozen observe the battles through the surveillance system in Las Noches. Although Ichigo and Dordonii fight evenly, Dordonii gains the upper hand by releasing his Zanpakuto. Ichigo continues his fight with the Privaran Espada Dordonii Alessandro del Sacacchio, and Dordonii easily overpowers Ichigo, 
leading him to demand that Ichigo use his Bankai. Ichigo refuses and Dordoniai uses a Ciro Blast in response. Meliel 2 Odelschwank blocks the blast by swallowing it and fires it back at Dordoniai. When Dordoniai attacks Nell, Ichigo uses his Bankai to stop the attack. However, Dordoniai requests that Ichigo use his hollow powers to fight him. Ichigo dons his hollow mask and disables Dordoniai with a single strike. Nell heals Dordoniai with her saliva at Ichigo's request, and Dordoniai explains that he had hoped to regain his position as a full espada by defeating Ichigo at full power. After being completely healed, he attacks Ichigo again. Dordoniai is struck down by Ichigo once again, and to thank Ichigo for using his full power against him, Dordoniai fights with Che Lut and the Exequias, a group of Arankars specializing in eliminating intruders, to allow Ichigo to retreat. When Sosuke Aizen learns of this, he asks who ordered the Exequias to attack Ichigo, and the Espada Sailoporo Grants takes responsibility. Aizen forgives him, noting that Dordoniai's body will help Sailoporo's research. Meanwhile, Yuriu Ishida is battling the Priveron Espada Siruchi Sandarichi, and Rukia encounters the Espada Aranyero Aruri. Aranyero removes his mask, revealing the face of Kayan Shiba, the former lieutenant of the 13th Division that Rukia had killed. Realizing that he is an imposter, Rukia begins to fight Kayan, and Kayan quickly gains the upper hand, as he was the one who taught Rukia how to fight. Rukia continues to struggle against Kayan, and he begins to overpower her when he uses the Shukai of his Zanpakuto. When Kayan disarms her, Rukia attempts to use a Kido spell, and reveals in the process that Kayan is afraid of the sunlight. Armed with this knowledge, Rukia binds Kayan with Kido and blasts a hole in the wall. In the sunlight, Kayan's face melts away to reveal a glass case with two masks inside. The creature reintroduces himself as Aranyero, and after moving out of the sunlight, assumes Kayan's appearance again. After informing Rukia that he absorbed Kayan's remains when he came to Hueco Mundo, Aranyero releases his Zanpakuto, transforming his lower body into a giant, octopus-like form. Yuriu continues to battle with Suruchi, who blocks all of his attacks with her Zanpakuto. The Arankar Pesh Kwatish decides to help Yuriu, and uses his saliva to cause Suruchi to trip and land awkwardly on the ground. Incensed, Suruchi releases her Zanpakuto, referred to as Resurrection, transforming into a giant bird with bladed wings. Unable to counter her abilities with his arrows alone, Yuriu pulls one of the tubes from his belt, which produces a powerful energy blade that easily slices through her winged blades. With his energy sword, which he calls Seal Schneider, Yuriu is easily able to defend himself against Suruchi's attacks. In response, Suruchi sheds her wings and focuses all her power into a single blade on her tail, and Yuriu defeats her by shooting his seal Schneider from his bow into her chest. As Yuriu and Pesh leave, Rudborn and the Exequias arrive to kill Suruchi. Meanwhile, Yasutora, Chad, Sado is at a disadvantage against the Priveron Espada Gantenbane Musketa. After taking several blows, Chad realizes how to access his full power, transforming his right arm into a giant shield named Brazo Derecho del Gigante. With his full power unleashed, Chad overpowers Gantenbane, and Gantenbane releases his Zanpakuto in response. However, Chad reveals that his right arm is intended solely for defense, and transforms his left arm, naming it Brazo Izquierdo del Diablo. Gilga, and after Chad fruitlessly attacks Noitora with his left arm, Noitora defeats and seriously wounds Chad with a single attack. Bored with the ease of his victory, Noitora leaves to pursue another intruder. Chad's apparent death is felt by everyone in Hueco Mundo, and when Espada Okuyora Schiffer brings dinner to Oriheim Inoue, she refuses to believe that Chad has died. Okuyora admonishes her noting that all her friends are doomed to fail because they rushed into battle without realizing the odds they faced. Oriheim slaps him, and bursts into tears after Okuyora leaves. 
Meanwhile, Renji Abarai and Donda Chaka Bilston encounter Sailaporo. Renji attempts to use his Bankai, but it shatters instantly, leading Sailaporo to remark that he designed the room they are in to negate Renji's Bankai. As this is happening, Rukia continues to battle Aranero, who reveals that he has eaten and obtained the powers of over 33,650 hollows. Overwhelmed by Aranero's released form, as well as the realization of Ryan's actual body, Rukia is impaled through the stomach, and her Zanpakuto, Sodi no Shirayuki, is broken in the process. She recalls her training with Kayan, in which he told her how a person's heart is passed on to those they are close to. Regaining her resolve, she performs the third dance San no Mai Shirafune, reconstructing her Zanpakuto with ice and impales Aranyero through the head. As Aranyero dies, Rukia attempts to stand in order to continue her journey to save Oriheim, but collapses from her injuries. When Renji asks Sailaporo how he negated his Bankai, Sailaporo reveals that he gathered the data using parasites stored in the body of his older brother Ilfert Grants, who Renji fought and defeated. With only his Shirkai, Renji's attacks cannot harm Sailaporo. Meanwhile, Okuyora meets Ichigo to inform him of Rukia's death. Ichigo attempts to leave to save Rukia, but Okuyora goads him into fighting by revealing that he was the person who forced Oriheim to come to Hueco Mundo. Furious, Ichigo uses his Bankai, dons his hollow mask and prepares to fight Okuyora in anger. Even after using his most powerful attacks, Ichigo is overpowered by Okuyora. Ichigo, however, refuses to give up, believing Okuyora to be the top-ranked Espada. Okuyora reveals his fourth tattoo, indicating that he is the fourth Espada, and stabs Ichigo in the chest with his hand, telling Ichigo to either escape from Hueco Mundo or die. Meanwhile, Oriheim is confronted by Loli Avern and Minoli Malia, two female Arankar furious because Aizen favors Oriheim over them. In Renji's fight with Sailaporo, Renji is almost killed by Sailaporo's strongest fraction Metazepi when he is struck by an arrow from a mysterious person, killing him. The mysterious person mocks Renji for almost being killed before Renji identifies the mysterious person as Yuriu. Oriheim is rescued from Loli and Minoli by a spot of Grimjau Jigerjax, who claims he is repaying Oriheim for restoring his arm and promptly kills Minoli and injures Loli. He tells Oriheim that he needs her help, and takes her with him. However, Oriheim chose to heal both Loli and Minoli before they leave. New Meanwhile, Yuriu finds that his arrival was expected by Sailaporo, and his attacks are useless against both the Espada and his fractions. Renji saves Yuriu from a fatal blow, and the two prepare to work together to take down Sailaporo. With Renji's help, Yuriu maneuvers Sailaporo into a trap, catching him in a massive explosion. Although the trap is damaging, it fails to kill Sailaporo. By eating one of his fraction's lumina, Sailaporo completely heals himself. However, rather than retaliate, he leaves, wanting to replace his damaged clothing and to allow Renji and Yuriu to formulate a new plan. Elsewhere, Grimjau brings Oriheim to Ichigo, and asks Oriheim to heal Ichigo so he can fight him again. Before she can finish doing so, Okuyora arrives. Using a special device, Grimjau traps Okuyora in an alternate dimension, and remarks that it will take two or three hours for Okuyora to break free. Oriheim finishes healing Ichigo, and Ichigo begins to fight Grimjau. Even after using his Bankai, Ichigo finds himself outmatched against Grimjau. However, when Grimjau fires a Grand Ray Zero at Oriheim and Nell, Ichigo uses his Hollow Mask. Glad that Ichigo is using his full power, Grimjau releases his Zanpaktu called Pantera and prepares to fight Ichigo. To continue their fight, and Ichigo is slowly worn down by Grimjau despite the fact that he is able to use his Hollow Mask longer than he previously could. Espada Tia Halibel and her fractions, the Trace Bestias, which consists of Emilu Apache, Francesca Mila Rose and Cyan Sung Sun, are seen watching the fight and comment during it. 
Halibel tells them that it is natural that they are afraid of Grimjow and Ichigo. That it is more like a fight between two Espadas than anything else. Oriheim, frightened by Ichigo's appearance due to his hollow mask, is afraid to watch the battle, but after Nell admonishes her, she overcomes her fear and cheers Ichigo on, giving him the resolve to deal a blow across Grimjow's chest. Grimjow, despite being wounded, refuses to give up. He uses his strongest attack on Ichigo, but Ichigo overcomes it and deals a final blow. After leaving Grimjow on the ground, Ichigo prepares to take Oriheim away from Lost No Chase. After the fight between Ichigo Kurosaki and Grimjow Jagerjax concludes when Ichigo breaks through Grimjow's strongest attack, Grimjow attempts to continue the fight, but is attacked by Neutra Gilga, an Espada. However, Ichigo protects Grimjow. As Ichigo and Neutra begin to fight, Tesla Lindo Cruz, Neutra's subordinate, captures Oriheim in Owe. Neutra reveals that he is the fifth Espada and is stronger than Grimjow. Meanwhile, Renji Aburai, Yuriu Ishida, Pesh Kwatish and Donda Chaka Bilston attempt to flee the Espada Sailaporo grants, but because Sailaporo controls the building they are in, he redirects the hallways to point back towards their battlefield. Neutra overpowers the tired Ichigo, and when Oriheim attempts to help, Tesla threatens to destroy her hair clips, the source of her power which would allow her to stop Tesla. Sailaporo releases his Zanpakuto and creates clones of Renji, Yuryu, Pesh and Dondochaka. Furthermore, he releases the power limiter in the room to allow Renji and Yuryu to fight at full power. Meanwhile, Neutra encounters Nell and recognizes her. When Ichigo asks how he knows Nell, Neutra reveals Nell's true name is Nelio Tuo Delschwank, indicating that she is a former Espada. Neutra uses Nell as a shield against Ichigo, whom he pins to the ground. As he prepares to break Ichigo's arm, the intensity of Nell's emotions causes her to return to her original adult form, Nelio. Pesh and Dondo Chaka realize that Nell has transformed into her original form, and feel nostalgic. Nelio takes Ichigo away from the battlefield, and as she prepares to fight Neutra, she reveals that she was the former third Espada. She overpowers Neutra, and in desperation, Neutra uses a Ciro Blast. Nelio uses her Ciro Doblade technique to absorb Neutra's Ciro and redirect it at him with doubled force. However, Neutra is relatively unharmed, and reveals that the Espada have grown stronger in her absence. Yuryu and Renji struggle to fight their clones as they copy their attacks. Renji uses his Bankai, and the clones copy him, destroying the building. In response, Sailaporo destroys the clones, and uses another ability of his released form to create voodoo dolls of his opponents. Using the dolls, he causes pain to his targets, and damages their internal organs. Meanwhile, Neutra and Nelio fight each other to a stalemate, and Neutra states that he despised Nelio even during her time as an Espada. Neutra recalls his past encounters with Nelio, in which Nelio sparred with Neutra and easily defeated him. In one session, Neutra demanded that she continue the fight until one of them died, and Nelio refused. As a result, Neutra attacked Nelio's subordinates, Pesh and Dondochaka, and with Sailaporo's aid, paralyzed Nelio long enough for him to land an attack on her. He left her outside Aizen's palace, where she transformed into an amnesiac child, in which Pesh and Donda Chaka vowed to protect her. In the present, Neutra taunts Nelio about their past and Nelio prepares to release her Zanpakuto. Nelio finishes her release, transforming into a white centaur, and overwhelms Neutra. Meanwhile, Pesh and Donda Chaka begin to fight Sailaporo, and use Ciro Syncretico, a combination attack fusing their Ciro blasts to attack Sailaporo. However, Sailaporo nullifies the attack and reveals that he had already analyzed their spiritual energy. When Nelio attempts to finish off Neutra, she transforms back into her child form. Ichigo tries to help Nell, and Neutra allows Tesla to fight him. After releasing his Zanpakuto, Tesla starts to torture the exhausted Ichigo. Before Tesla can deal the final blow, Soul Reaper Captain Kenpachi Zaraki stops him. 
Kenpachi defeats Tesla in one blow and tells Ichigo to stay out of his fight with Noitra. He informs Ichigo that Kisuke Urahara was tasked with making the Garganta gateways into Hueco Mundo stable enough for Soul Reaper captains to enter, and that three other captains came with him. Captain Retsu Unohana arrives with her lieutenant, Aisain Kotetsu, and they stop Rudborn Che Lute and the Exequias from killing Yasutora, Chad, Sado and Gantanbane Musketa. Captain Mayuri Kuratsuchi and his lieutenant arrive and Mayuri is confident that he can win against Sail Aporo, even after Sail Aporo creates a voodoo doll of him. Captain Bayakuya Kuchiki arrives to save Rukia Kuchiki from Espada Zamari Leru, and overcomes Zamari's enhanced speed with the techniques Yoruchi Shihoin taught him. After realizing that Bayakuya refuses to treat him as an equal opponent, Zamari releases his Zanpakuto, and grows on his body eyes that can control the objects they are looking at. Zamari takes control of Bayakuya's arm and leg, and Bayakuya cuts his own tendons to stop them from moving. Meanwhile, Bayakuya orders Hanataro Yamada to take Rukia to safety. Zamari uses one of his eyes to control Rukia, and has her slice Hanataro with her sword. Before Bayakuya can interfere, he threatens to force her to commit suicide. Bayakuya immobilizes Rukia with Kido, and uses his Bankai. Surrounded by thousands of tiny blades, Zamari is overwhelmed by the attack. Zamari survives Bayakuya's attack, but Bayakuya uses Kido to block Zamari's control ability, and quickly dispatches him. Mayuri initially seems unable to fight back against Sail Aporo, who uses his voodoo doll ability to destroy all of Mayuri's organs. However, he reveals that he has made himself immune to Sail Aporo's attack by replacing the organs in his body with dummies, after learning about the ability from bacteria he implanted in Yuryu to use the voodoo doll. He then activates his Bankai, which poisons Sail Aporo, and subsequently swallows him. Rukia regains consciousness, and Bayakuya tells her to rest and regain her strength for the impending battles. Kenpachi battles Noitra, and Oriheim heals Nell at Ichigo's request. While swallowing Sail Aporo with his Bankai, Mayuri inadvertently poisons Yuryu and Renji, and Sail Aporo seizes the opportunity to resurrect himself by absorbing Nimu's spiritual particles through his Gabriel technique. However, in the process, he ingests a superhuman drug from inside Nimu that increases all of his senses to the point where his body cannot respond to the flood of sensory information, immobilizing him with Mayuri stating that one second would feel like a century. He then stabs Sail Aporo through the hand before stabbing him in the heart. Sail Aporo, whose senses are heightened by the drug, feels Mayuri's Zanpakuto piercing through his hand and heart for what he feels as centuries before he dies. After restoring Nimu to full health, Mayuri orders her to clear away the rubble that concealed Sail Aporo's laboratory. Afterwards, Mayuri heals Yuriu's injuries. Meanwhile, Kenpachi has difficulty cutting through Noitra's skin, which Noitra claims is the toughest of any of the Espada, but believes that Noitra can be injured. Kenpachi stabs Noitra through his eye patch, but Noitra counterattacks, injuring Kenpachi. He then reveals that Kenpachi had stabbed him through his hollow hole, which is where his left eye should have been. Kenpachi slashes at Noitra, wounding him, and uses the correct amount of force he needed to cut Noitra's skin. He continues to attack Noitra, and after Noitra accidentally tears off Kenpachi's eye patch while trying to attack him, the limits on his power are removed. Kenpachi delivers a slash through Noitra's torso. Noitra releases his Zanpakuto, and gains an additional pair of arms. Noitra attacks Kenpachi and severely wounds him, while Kenpachi manages to cut off one of his arms. Noitra regenerates the arm and continues on the assault, growing another pair of arms and stabbing Kenpachi with one of his hands. Kenpachi continues fighting Noitra, and although he is able to keep up with his attacks, he realizes that he is in danger of dying. He then resorts to using Kendo, and severely injures Noitra with a two-handed strike. Kenpachi attempts to leave, but Noitra insists that he finish their battle. Noitra recalls his time with Nelio, in which Nelio frequently saved him from his attempts to die in battle, and claims that he is angered by any display of pity from his opponent. He charges Kenpachi, 
who inflicts the finishing blow. After Kenpachi defeats Neutra, the Espadas Coyote Stark and Lilinette Gingerbuck arrive and carry Orihime away to a tower, where Sosuke Aizen greets her. He informs her that he, Jin Ikemaru and Kaname Tozen are preparing to destroy Karakura Town. Aizen orders Tozen to contact the Soul Reaper captains, Ichigo, and his friends with Kido, and reveals that he brought Orihime to Hueco Mundo to lure and trap them. While he travels through a Garganta portal to Karakura Town, however, 1st Division Captain Genryard squads confronts Aizen, with five other captains. Aizen summons the Espada Stark and Lilinette, Berrigan Luzenbairn, and Tyr Halibel and orders Espada Okuyora Schiffer to protect Las Noches. Ichigo, sensing the threat to Oriheim, flies off to save her. 110 years before the start of the series, in which Shinji Hirako is approached as the 5th Division Captain by then, the 5th Division Lieutenant Sosuke Aizen hears about preparations for the new 12th Division Captain. Yoruchi Shihoin tells Kisuke Urahara that she has recommended him for the position as the new 12th Division Captain, while they are sparring in their private training area. Sui Fong, immediately distrusting Urahara because of what she has seen of his persona and his dwelling, follows him around town to prove to Yoruchi that he is not worthy of the responsibility required for the new position. Yoruchi, however, after seeing Sui Fong's proof on paper, disregards it as a love letter. Urahara and a group of soul reapers were tailing a group of deserters who had abandoned the Siriidei of their own volition and sent to stop them. After they are taken care of, Urahara passes the qualification exam and shows up to the meeting of the captains. Urahara is appointed the 12th division captain at the ceremony attended by the other captains and introduces himself to his squad. Lieutenant Hayori Saragaki is the only one who does not become friendly with him. She made a scene while trying to load his things into his new room, and challenged him to a match to see if he really can hold up to his promise of not letting danger befall the 12th Division. The squad members are led to believe that their captain was too weak and thus fell easily at Hayori's attack. But he had actually lost on purpose, not wanting to embarrass Hayori. Later that night, Hirako and Urahara are sitting outside, and Hirako tells Urahara that Hayori loved the previous captain of the 12th division like a mother and that she would be difficult to replace in her heart. The next day, Hayori finally sees Urahara's office and is shocked by how much he has changed it since the previous captain was there. Urahara takes Hayori to the maggot's nest, explaining on the way that its purpose is to hold people deemed potentially dangerous by the soul society. While they are walking through the penitentiary, a large prisoner attacks Hayori, but Urahara easily subdues the man with his bare hand. Deep inside, Urahara approaches a younger Mayuri Kuratsuchi and discusses his being his second in command of a new division of their own making, the Technological Research Bureau. Elsewhere, a young Bayakuya Kuchiki is shown to have been easily irritated at that age. Proven when Yoruchi steals his hair ribbon before escaping, taunting him by putting her breasts against his head in the process. Jushiro Yukitake tells Kai and Shiba of a boy who is to be promoted to a seat position in his squad. The boy, who easily slays the third seat officer of the 5th division, is revealed to be a young Jin Ikemaru under the watchful and impressed eye of Aizen. Nine years later, three shadowed figures watch as citizens of the Rukongai are devoured and killed by a strange white substance. Later, Hirako, Aizen, Mayuri, Hayori and Urahara meet to discuss the recent disappearances of the Rukongai citizens. Kensei Mugiruma and his 9th division are deployed to assess the situation, and find a gigantic hollow, which attacks three boys. Kensei Mugiruma saves one of the boys, a younger Shuhei Hiseijai, from certain death. Later on Mayuri and Urahara's lab. Hayori is chosen to go from the 12th division to see what is going on with the recent disappearances of the citizens. Kensei and the rest of his squad camp in the woods, looking for a clue as to what is attacking the people. Tudu, one of his subordinates, seemingly kills Kanaim Tozen and the rest of the group, and is struck down himself. Kensei, the only one left, is imprisoned in a well of darkness and impaled with a blade. When the darkness lifts, he recognizes his attacker. 
the spiritual energies of Kensei and his squad vanish, sparking a serious situation in the Soul Society. An emergency captain's meeting is held to determine who will oversee the situation. Urahara appears late and pleads his case to go, but Genryusai Shigakuni Yamamoto does not grant his request. Instead, Hirako, Lave Kawa, Rojuro Rose, Odoribashi, Yadamara Lisa and Hachijin Ashoda, from the Kido Corps, are dispatched. In the woods, Hayori is attacked by a grotesque and powerful hollow revealed to be Kensei. Hirako arrives to save her, along with the rest of the captains, but soon Mashiro Kuna appears and also transforms into a hollow and attacks the group. Hachijin binds both Mashiro and Kensei, but the latter escapes through brute strength alone. Meanwhile, Urahara is torn at his decision to send Hayori out alone and defies orders that he is not to go, using a cloak that completely masks his energy. Before he can set out, Tezsai Tsukabashi, also of the Kido Corps, accompanies him. The 8th Division Captain Shunsue Kairaku is out late when he happens upon Nanao Ise, his future lieutenant, who wonders if Lisa will be all right. Kensei's new abilities overpower most of the group, until Hachijin finally binds him with a powerful spell. Hirako is then brutally attacked by Hayori, who is now a hollow. Tozen incapacitates the group, with the exception of Hirako. Aizen appears and reveals his own betrayal, explaining to Hirako that his illusion casting Zanpakuto made it seem like Aizen was following Hirako all the time, when it was actually a different person. Hirako and the rest of the group start transforming into hollows, but Hirako manages to hang on to himself. Aizen prepares to finish off Hirako, but Urahara and Tezsai arrive to stop him. Urahara and Tezsai try to attack Aizen, but Aizen is expecting their arrival. While Urahara reveals he has been testing hollowification in the Soul Society, Aizen flees. In the 12th Division Research Facilities, Urahara shows Tezai the object that may be useful in saving those undergoing the holification process, being known as the Orb of Distortion. Urahara and Tezai are arrested and brought before Central Room 46 the next morning, and are falsely accused as the ones responsible for Aizen's acts. Just before the two are detained, Yoruchi breaks in and takes them back to her hideout, along with the eight Soul Reapers undergoing holification. Urahara declares that he will find out how to save them. Time flashes forward to present day at the Wizards' headquarters, as Hirako says that they appreciate what they have become thanks to Urahara and Aizen, and the group leaves. It then goes back to the battle where the captains talk amongst themselves, when suddenly 1st Division Captain Genryusai Shigakuni Yamamoto unleashes his Shirkai to trap Aizen, Tozen, and Jin. Back in Las Noches, Ulquiora talks to Oriheim asking if she is scared, to which she replies she is not. The Exequias and their leader, Rudborn Che Lute, temporarily delay Ichigo. Rudborn and his men attack, but are stopped by Chad, Rukia Kachiki and Renji Aburai. Ichigo continues on his way of Ichigo arrives in the fifth tower to save Oriheim and confronts Ulquiora. Ulquiora unsheathes his sword and they begin their battle. Meanwhile, back at the replica of Karakura town, Espada Barrigan Luzenbern takes command since Aizen is trapped inside Yamamoto's fire prison. His first plan of action is to destroy the four pillars protecting Karakura town, and he sends out four giant hollows to do the job. Soul Reapers Ikiku Matarain, Yumichika Ayasegawa, Izuru Kira and Shuhei Hisejai each take one pillar, and after defeating the hollows with ease, are respectively matched up against Cho Neng Pao, Charlotte Chulhorn, Avirama Redder, and Finder Kalius, four of Barrigan's six fractions. Each is introduced to the other and the battle for Karakura town begins. In his fight, Izuru manages to draw blood against his opponent, Avirama, who proceeds to release his Zanpakuto, Agila. Meanwhile, Yumichika and his opponent, Charlotte, continue their fight, but the two spar while declaring the other ugly. However, both decide that the victor shall be the most beautiful. Charlotte uses several attacks, which are able to injure Yumichika. When Yumichika manages to cut off some of the hair of Charlotte, the latter enrages and releases his Zanpakuto, Reina de Rosas. Now stronger than Yumichika, 
the fight escalates until Charlotte traps Yumichika in a prison of black thorns, which completely encases the combatants and their Ryatsu, hiding Yumichika's death from everyone. Upon hearing that his Ryatsu is hidden, Yumichika reveals the true form of his Zanpakuto, that of a sword with Kido abilities. With its power, he drains Charlotte's Ryatsu, claiming victory. Yumichika reveals that he uses a nickname for his Zanpakuto to avoid revealing its Kido abilities so that he can fit in with the 11th Division, there being an unspoken rule against using them. The other fights continue elsewhere, and Finder reveals to Hisagi that he can chip off pieces of his mask to increase his power level. Izuru fights Abirama, whose Resurrection turns him into a bird and enables him to attack Izuru with heavy steel feathers. Izuru uses his Zanpakuto, Wabasuk, to make Avarama's wings too heavy to fly, and reveals that it represents the belief of the Third Division that war is full of despair. He then decapitates Avirama, noting afterward that he does not want to be forgiven. Hisagi has difficulty fighting Finder, despite technically being on the same level of power. When Finder releases his Zanpakuto, Pinza Aguda, and corners Hisagi with blasts of water, Hisagi reluctantly releases his Zanpakuto, Kazashini. With his Zanpakuto released Hisagi overpowers Finder, seeing this Finder breaks off 90% of his mask, now making him much stronger, but Hisagi easily damages him leaving Finder paralyzed with fear. After overpowering Finder, Hisagi explains that Finder is inferior to him because Finder does not fear his own power. Finder makes a desperate attempt to defeat Hisagi with a Ciro Blast, but is killed by Hisagi's Zanpakuto. Meanwhile, Pau is able to defeat Ikaku and destroy the pillar he had been guarding. Yumichika says his name as he sees Ikaku defeated. As a result of the pillar being destroyed, the real Karakura town starts to return, but 7 Division Lieutenant Tetsuziman IBA manages to stop it while his captain Sajin Kamamura faces Pau. Yumichika desperately tries to go after his friend Ikaku after realizing he had been defeated, but is knocked unconscious by Hisagi and Izuru for his own good. Pau knocks Kamamura aside with a single punch in his unreleased state, and releasing his Zanpakuto, Calderon, vastly increases his size and tries to finish off Ikaku and IBA. Kamamura, however, manages to overpower and defeat him easily with his Bankai. IBA reprimands Ikaku for failing to protect the pillar because of his desire to avoid revealing his own strength, and tells him that if he wishes to fight, he must carry out his orders even at the cost of his own life. Barrigan grows visibly angry because of the defeat of his fractions. Barrigan's two remaining fractions, Geo Vega and Nerga Parduak, offer to deal with the other Soul Reapers themselves, ending up facing against 2nd Division Captain Swayfone and Lieutenant Marekio Omida. The respective 8th and 13th Division Captains Shunsuei Kairaku and Jushiro Yukatake face Coyote Stark, but are unwilling to fight against his fraction, Lilinette Gingerbuck. While 10th Division Captain Toshiro Hitsugaya begins fighting Tyr Halibel, Lt. Ranjiku Matsumoto begins fighting her fractions, who are able to defend themselves against the ability of her Zanpakuto by using the Ciro Blast. While Omida struggles against Nerga, Swayfong is able to pin Gio to the wall and releases her Zanpakuto. Gio manages to free himself and fights back against Swayfong, chiding her for not finishing him off when she had the chance. He releases his Zanpakuto, Tigre Estoke, and continues fighting her, seeming to be of equal or greater skill. Omida continues fighting Nerga, and while it appears that Nerga can keep up with his speed even in his slower release state, Omida reveals that he had only pretended to be slow, and manages to outmaneuver Nerga and bash him in the head with his Zanpakuto, Gejitsuburi. Despite this, Nerga gets up again, only to be knocked down again when Gio accidentally knocks Swayfong at his head. Swayfong continues fighting Gio, and is pinned down. Nerga gets up and tries attacking Omida again, but he defeats him and tries to help Swayfong, Geo is about to shoot Omida with a Ciro Blast, but Swayfong breaks free and knocks Omida away before Geo can kill him, revealing that she had hoped to study the Resurrection form of an Erencar before facing the Espados. Geo then responds by turning into his Resurrection form to grow stronger, but Swayfong kills him easily with her the ability of her Zanpakuto. 
She and Omida then go to face Berrigan. Ranjiko fights Tyr Halibel's three fractions, those being Emilu Apache, Francesca Mila Rose, and Cyan Sungsun. She struggles against them until 5th Division Lieutenant Momo Hinamori arrives, having resolved to fight against her former captain. Momo uses a keto combination that seriously injures the three fractions, but they heal their wounds by releasing their Zanpakuto, and use their left arms to create a strange creature that shares their traits. Elsewhere, Kairaku continues his battle with Stark, but neither is willing to release their Zanpakuto. Lilinette attempts to fight Yukatik, but he is able to effortlessly block her attacks and tells her to give up, angering her. The fused creature named Ayon is able to severely wound Ranjiku and Momo with little effort, but Hisajai and Izuru arrive to save them. Hisajai attempts to fight Ayon while Izuru tends to Momo and Ranjiku's wounds, but Ayon overpowers him. IBA tries to intervene, but Ayon pushes him aside with a Ciro blast from a hidden eye. It tosses Hisajai aside and advances on Izuru, but Yamamoto, disappointed that his men are unable to defeat it, steps in to fight it, wounding it with his staff. Ayon goes into a rage after being wounded by Yamamoto and increases in size, but Yamamoto easily defeats it and Halibel's three fractions. Hitsugaya struggles against Halibel, who reveals that she is the third Espada and then hits him with a torrent of energy. Kairaku fights Stark, who reveals that he is the first Espada. Elsewhere in Lost No Chase, Chad and Rinji have defeated the Exequias, as Rukia is left to battle Rudborn. Ichigo continues his fight with Okuyora, and despite Okuyora's claim that Ichigo's friends and the Soul Reapers will be defeated, Ichigo has faith in their victory and continues to fight against him. Ichigo and Okuyora's final battle properly gets underway with the two of them being more or less evenly matched. Ichigo is able to read his opponent's movements better than he could when they first fought, managing to wound Okuyora, if even slightly. Ichigo surmises that it is either he is becoming more like a hollow or his opponent is becoming more human, which angers Okuyora. Meanwhile, Yasutora, Chad, Sado and Rinji Aburai struggled to fight a gigantic hollow in the desert of Hueco Mundo named Batakaroa, eventually claiming victory after discovering its weakness by blasting its head off after cracking its body. Back in a tower of Lost Noches, Orihime Inoue manages to protect Ichigo from a near-lethal attack from Okuyora. Ichigo and Okuyora continue their fierce fight as Loli Avern and Minoli Malia approach Orheim. Although Loli orders Minoli to rip Oriheim to shreds, Minoli refuses, telling Loli that Oriheim has outstanding power which can heal anything. Loli berates Minoli and begins to torture Oriheim by herself as Ichigo tries to reach Oriheim despite Okuyora blocking him. When Yami Rialgo suddenly arrives, he kills Minoli and injures Loli when Okuyora refuses to let him fight Ichigo. Oriheim heals Loli. Who then releases her Zanpakuto, Iskalapendra, revealing herself with multiple venomous skeletal tentacles. As Loli squares off with Yami, he punches her through the wall and lets her fall, seemingly to her death. He then aims for Oriheim, who tries to defend herself with Santen Keshin as Ichigo still tries to defeat Okuyora. Meanwhile, Rukia Kuchiki continues to fight Rudborn Che Lut and the Exequias as Chad and Rinji slaughter more hollows. Yuryu Ishida bursts through the wall of the tower with Jinrei Kojaku. Preparing to aid Ichigo and rescue Oriheim. Yuryu fights Yami separate from the group, using the majority of his Quincy techniques to attempt to defeat this giant Erenkar, all the while luring him into a trap. Using mines he had gotten from Mayuri Kuratsuchi and planting them on every floor of the fifth tower, Yuryu succeeds in dropping Yami all the way to ground level. Meanwhile, Rukia has difficulty in dispatching Rudborn and the Exequias until Chad and Renji show up to give her a hand. Ichigo, still battling Okuyora, dons his hollow mask and starts to overwhelm his opponent. Okuyora breaks through the canopy of Lost No Chase in order to release his Zanpakuto, Murcielago while stating the only two rules for inside of Lost No Chase, 
the first rule is Grand Ray Zero and the second rule is Espadas 1 to 4 cannot release their Zen Pacto, his sword release gives him large bat-like wings, raising his abilities to the point where he nearly decapitates Ichigo with his first attack. Ichigo tries to fend off Okuyora's attacks with mixed results. However, he declares that he will never give up even if this Eren car is stronger than he is. Okuyora responds by transforming into his second release, which he claims Aizen himself has not seen. Ichigo attempts to defend himself and get in an attack, but Okuyora is too fast and powerful for him. Eventually, when Oriheim and Yuryu reach the surface, they discover that Ichigo has already been defeated and captured by Okuyora, who then tells Oriheim to watch how he will extinguish her last hope by killing Ichigo. With that, he punches a hole through Ichigo's chest by firing his Siro Oscuras. A horrified Oriheim rushes to Ichigo's lifeless body, only to be blocked by Okuyora. Yuryu intervenes and attempts a sneak attack yet fails, but he decides to buy Oriheim time to heal Ichigo's wounds. Okuyora quickly overwhelms him, while a distraught Oriheim cries out for Ichigo. Oriheim's lament breakdown unexpectedly triggers Ichigo to undergo a new holofication. Okuyora, surprised at the transformation, unleashes a Siro Oscuras, but only to have it blocked by Ichigo's own Siro. After a quick skirmish, Ichigo manages to sever one of Okuyora's arms. Okuyora reveals his incredible ability to regenerate non-vital organs instantaneously. He regenerates his severed arm and unveils his most devastating attack, Lanza del Relampago. The attack proves fruitless as Ichigo dodges it without effort and Okuyora is quickly overwhelmed and defeated. As Rudborn continuously produces more soldiers to defend him, Chad and Renji attack him simultaneously with them breaking his defense while Rukia freezes Rudborn, who is then finished off by Yami who abruptly arrives at the scene. Meanwhile, in his new hollow form, Ichigo finishes Okuyora point-blank with his Siro, but when Yuryu stops him, trying to end his merciless attacks, Ichigo stabs Yuryu with his Zanpakuto. Okuyora awakes and interrupts Ichigo from using his Siro on Yuryu, causing it to backfire on Ichigo and reverting him back to his normal self. Although Okuyora demands to have a rematch with Ichigo, the latter compromises by suggesting an even-leveled fight. Okuyora, agreeing to his terms, suddenly realizes his body is expiring due to overexhaustion of his own power, yet Ichigo refuses to kill him. While his body turns to ash, Okuyora remembers his conversations with Oriheim and realizes he has grown a heart within himself. Okuyora asks Oriheim if she is afraid of him. And she replies that she is not. Satisfied with her answer, Okuyora dissolves and fades into the winds. Yami becomes enraged at Okuyora's death and releases his Zanpakuto, Ira. He grows to a colossal size and his rank increases from 10 to 0, explaining that the Espadas actually rank from 0 to 9. Rukia, Chad and Renji go all out on him, but he successfully blocks all their attacks. Meanwhile, in the fake Karakura town, Tyr Halibel continues her fight with Tashiro Hitsugaya. Halibel releases her sword, Tiburon, and slices Hitsugaya's body in two. As she attempts to move toward Genryusai Shigakuni Yamamoto to exact revenge on him for destroying her fractions, the Trace Bestias, Hitsugaya reappears and reveals what she sliced was merely an ice illusion. Hitsugaya and Halibel use an array of water and ice attacks. Since Hitsugaya can turn any water into ice, and Halibel can turn any ice into water, both of their attacks neutralize each other out. However, both of them have a plan to turn the battleground into water and finish off the opponent in a single blow. As Hitsugaya tries to keep up with Halibel and protect the injured Soul Reaper lieutenants, he is injured severely from Halibel's cascada. When Halibel comments on Hitsugaya not being able to fight at full strength, Hitsugaya stands up and extols at Hyrenmer being the strongest of all snow and ice Sanpakuto, which gives the wielder the control of the heavens. He is then about to unleash his strongest attack, Hyaten Hayakaso. Hitsugaya releases his Hyaten Hayakaso, 
an attack that manipulates the weather then uses it to dramatically increase its power, and successfully freezes Halibel, trapping her in a tower of ice. Meanwhile, Suifong and Marekio Omida continue their fight against Barragan Luzenbern. He slows Suifong's reaction time, making her unable to land any of her attacks on him, then grabs her left shoulder, aging it to the point that it breaks from frailty. Suifong and Omida devise a strategy to attack Barragan. But Omida hesitates at the last moment and it fails. Barragan then releases his Zanpakuto, arrogant, and unleashes his Respira, a dark cloud that decays everything in its path. His Respira chases after Suifong and manages to reach her left hand, which withers it down to the bone and begins to spread up her arm. Suifong, realizing that her whole body will decay into nothing unless drastic action is taken, orders Omida to cut off her left arm before the Respira can spread further. Suifong and Omida find themselves in a bad situation against Barragan's Respira. They cannot even counterattack Respira because they cannot get anywhere near it. Then, Suifong goes off somewhere, leaving Omida to fight Barragan alone. Omida tries to buy time with various ideas but finds himself impotent against Barragan. Just when Omida is backed into a corner, Suifong arrives, having released her Bankai, a large golden weapon that covers her entire right arm. She then fires a missile at Barragan which leads to a massive explosion. The massive explosion sends Suifong flying, but Omida manages to catch her, protecting her from crashing into a building. Shunsue Kairaku and Coyote Stark continue their fight as Stark pressures Kairaku to reveal his Bankai. Stark then calls for Lilinette Gingerbuck and he fuses together with her in order to release his Zanpakuto, Los Lobos, dressing like a gunslinger. The fight resumes as Stark gains the upper hand, confusing Kairaku as how his pair of guns function. As Kairaku is in trouble with Stark Zero, Jushiro Yukatake uses his Shurkai which leaves Stark questioning if Yukatake just fired a Siro. Kairaku allows Yukatake to join him in fighting Stark, who notices Yukatake's Shurkai, which absorbs his Siro and shoots it back out again. Just then, a huge Garganta opens up and reveals Wonderweiss Mergera and another gigantic hollow named Hula next to him. Wonderweiss stabs Yukatake in the chest while Stark shoots Kairaku with a Siro, making both Kairaku and Yukatake faint to the ground. Wonderweiss then screams loudly, shattering the ice that Halibel was trapped in and allowing her to escape unharmed. Wonderweiss then blows out the smoke remaining from the missile out of Barragan, making him resume his place. Wonderweiss finally has Hula blow away the flames surrounding Aizen, Jin Ikimaru, and Kanaim Tozen. Just when the Soul Reapers begin to panic, the wizards make an unsuspected arrival at the fake Karakura town right in front of Aizen, Jin and Tozen. 101 years ago, it is revealed how Aizen experimented hollowification on a group of soul reapers, when they were sent into exile and why they called themselves the wizards. In the present, Shinji Hirako explains to Yamamoto that the wizards are not the allies of the soul reapers, but the enemies of Aizen, yet Ichigo is the exception. Wonderweiss commands Huler to release a lot of Minos, but the wizards quickly defeat them. Hirako, later confronting Aizen, is stopped by Tozen, who is then intervened by Sajin Kamamura. Halibel breaks out of the ice and attacks Hitsugaya, but Hayori Saragaki backs him up and Lisa Yadamaru comes to assist her. Mashiro Kuna easily defeats Huler, while Love Ekawa and Rojuro Rose Odoribashi confront Stark. Kamamura and Tozen are quickly interrupted by Shuhei Hisajai, who wants to join Kamamura in defeating Tozen. Hisajai joins Kamamura to battle Tozen in hopes of bringing his former captain back to his senses. Meanwhile, the other Soul Reapers form uneasy alliances with the wizards, Lisa, Hayori and Hitsugaya take on Halibel, Love and Rose cover for Kairaku and Yukatake and face Stark, and Hachijin, Hachi, Ashoda, Suifong and Omida are up against Barragan. Hachi creates a barrier around Barragan, yet he easily dissipated. Hachi makes an armored wall between the three of them and Barragan to buy some time. Hachi asks Suifong to use her Bankai again in exchange for a deal. 
Berrigan survived the first time she used it because he made the missile age and redirected the explosion away from him. When Hachi boxes Berrigan in with three more armored walls around him, Suifeng fire her Bankai to defeat Berrigan once more, granted that Hachi will seal Kisuk Urahara in a barrier for one month. Hirako, though failing to sneak up on Jin, remarks that one more of Aizen's allies have fallen. Berrigan survives Suifeng's Bankai, though half his face has been destroyed. In anger, he fires out his Respira attack until he rots away Hachi's right hand. However, Hachi removes his hand using a barrier and transports it inside Berrigan's body, causing him to start deteriorating painfully. In a flashback, it is revealed he was once the ruler of Hueco Mundo until dethroned by Aizen, Jin and Tozen. In the present, Berrigan, taking his final moments to remember his vow to reclaim his throne someday, tosses his axe at Aizen, but it disintegrates and Berrigan dies. Stark shows distress at his death and vows to avenge him. Stark shows no sign of getting serious in his battle against Love and Rose. Running out of patience, Lilinette begins to mindlessly fire at the two wizards without Stark's permission. But her attacks prove to be ineffective against the two, and she is gradually cornered by the pair's fine team play. Finally, Love hits Stark, throwing him into a sea of flames. Lisa, Hayori and Hitsugaya are having an argument about their difficulty with coordinating their attacks against Halibel. With Lilinette's motivation, Stark then summons a pack of wolves, made from parts of their souls, which explode on impact. When his victory seems assured, Stark is unexpectedly stabbed in the back. It is revealed that Kairaku was the one who had stabbed Stark in the back. Kairaku then explains that his Zanpakuto has four techniques in the form of children's games turned into reality. Stark catches on quickly and learns to use Kairaku's attacks against him. However, Lilinette sacrifices her life for Stark by absorbing a fatal attack from Kairaku that Stark was unable to block in time. Showing distress at her death, Stark nearly defeats Kairaku at one point. Instead, Kairaku finishes Stark off by targeting his hollow hole, dealing a massive amount of damage to Stark. As Stark dies, a flashback reveals Stark's first encounter with Lilinette in Hueco Mundo. Meanwhile, Aizen, growing tired of the battles, decides he no longer needs Halibel and slashes her. When Halibel was a Vasto Lord long ago, she recruited Emilu Apache, Francesca Mila Rose and Cyan Sung Sun to be the Trace Bestias, tasked to grow stronger and to kill ravenous hollows. The quartet later encountered Berrigan when he was king of Hueco Mundo, who offered her to join his side, but she declined, also wounding a shark-like hollow who approached her. After Aizen, Jin and Tozen arrived in Hueco Mundo to recruit Berrigan, Aizen also took an interest in Halibel. Some time later, Halibel is attacked by the shark-like hollow, which has now turned into an errand car. Although the Trace Bestias tried to help her, they are eventually defeated. Just when the shark-like Arankar is about to kill Halibel, Aizen suddenly appeared and killed the Arankar, then offering Halibel a place in his Arankar army and telling her that no one would have to be sacrificed in order to grow stronger. In the present, Halibel angrily attacks Aizen, but she is then stabbed in the back of her left shoulder by Aizen who used an illusion to deceive her, sending her plummeting into the city below. Aizen then challenges the Soul Reapers and Wizards in combat. Wonder Weiss battles Mashiro, who takes the upper hand until her hollow mask breaks. Before Wonder Weiss can finish her off, Kensei Mugiruma steps in to save her and takes her place, soon releasing his Bankai at Wonder Weiss. Meanwhile, Hayori explains to Aizen why the wizards have a score to settle with him, due to their painful experiences they endured 101 years ago. Although Hirako warns the others not to fall for Aizen's taunts, Hayori gives in and rushes in for an attack at Aizen. Only to be stabbed in the back by Jin, badly injuring her. Hirako catches Hayori, who then apologizes for not being able to hold back. Hirako calls for Ichigo, realizing that Oriheim can still heal her. Meanwhile, back in Hueco Mundo, Ichigo has gone to help Rukia, Chad and Renji. 
The three are still in a battle with Yami, trying to come up with tricks to defeat him but are ultimately defeated. Ichigo manages to reach where Rukia, Chad, and Rinji were after Rukia was thrown by Yami. Ichigo manages to cut Yami slightly with a point-blank Getsuga Tensho using a new hollow mask, but is unable to wear it again. Yami takes advantage of the situation and grabs Ichigo, with an intent of crushing Ichigo with his bare hands. Bayakuya Kachiki and Kenpachi Zaraki save Ichigo, having cut one of Yami's legs off. Mayuri arrives and tells everyone that he has managed to analyze the Garganta and offers to send Ichigo back to Karakura town through it. Bayakuya reminds Ichigo that his duty is supposed to be protecting Karakura town, not fighting at Hueco Mundo. Retsu Unohana decides to go along with Ichigo to the world of the living. The battle between Kenpachi and Yami continues, as the former seems to have the upper hand. Meanwhile, Ichigo and Unohana head for the world of the living through the Garganta opened by Mayuri, who discusses the after-war period with Bayakuya. Unohana reveals to Ichigo that he is the only person who can defeat Aizen, since he is the only one that did not witness Aizen's Shirkai, also informing him that seeing Aizen's Shirkai is out of the question. Ichigo, realizing his great responsibility, resolves to defeat Aizen. Back in Hueco Mundo, Kenpachi is still dominating Yami, seemingly defeating him and prompting Bayakuya to finish him off, who refuses to do so, as Yami suddenly fires a Ciro at both captains. Kenpachi scolds Bayakuya for being useless and not finishing off Yami earlier. Bayakuya gets angry squares off with Kenpachi to see who is stronger. Yami attempts to attack, but is promptly struck down by both Bayakuya and Kenpachi for interrupting their feud. Yami gets angry and grows into an altered form, revealing that his rage lets him become stronger. Meanwhile, after Jin had injured Hayori, Hirako then confronts Aizen. When Tozen decides to use his true power against his Seijai and Kamamura, he shocks them by donning a hollow mask instead of using his Bankai. Hisagi and Kamamura are both disheartened to see how far Tozen has gone to attain more power. Tozen quickly dispatches Hisagi with a slash across his chest and kicks Kamamura to the ground below. Hisagi, who sidestepped the slash, restrains Tozen, who then stabs him through the chest again. Afterwards, Kamamura prepares to release his Bankai. In the past, it is shown how Kamamura and Tozen met as friends, later revealing that Kamamura wanted to repay a debt as his reason for becoming a soul reaper. In the present, Kamamura activates his Bankai but is blocked continually by Tozen, who later discovers that he can cause damage to Kamamura himself whenever his Bankai is damaged. Kamamura learns that Tozen had lost a beloved female friend to murder by her husband, and he had joined the academy in order to get his revenge for her demise. Tozen then activates his release form, taking the form of a hairy insect. When he opens his eyes in this new form, Tozen exults that he can see the world for the first time. Meanwhile, Aizen finally draws his blade against Hirako. Nonetheless, Hirako then tells Aizen that he is sorely mistaken if he believes he is the only one with a Zanpakuto that has power over the senses. Tozen does not seem to fight as well in his new form now that he can see, but he still easily defeats Kamamura with a Ciro. As he charges another Ciro to finish Kamamura, who has given up, Hisagi stabs Tozen, then claims that if he did not have sight, he could have easily dodged his attack. Hisagi releases his Zanpakuto and slices Tozen through the neck, dispelling his holofied form. Meanwhile, Hirako releases his Shirkai, having the ability to create great visual illusions, which he calls the inverted world. Hirako seems to have the upper hand and hits Aizen several times. However, Aizen, having messed with Hirako's senses earlier, slices Hirako's back, claiming that his Zanpakuto is more superior. The defeated Tozen comes to his senses and requests to see Hisagi's face clearly once more, but he dies when an internal impact destroys his body. Hisagi is devastated while Kamamura rages at Aizen, who purposely killed Tozen. 
At this point, Ichigo appears behind Aizen preparing to attack him. Ichigo, failing to wound Aizen, is easily overwhelmed yet remains alive. As Aizen starts questioning Ichigo's purpose for fighting him, Kamamura calms him and tells him to not fall for his ruse. All of the Soul Reapers and Wizards then join in to protect Ichigo from witnessing Aizen's Shirkai, to enable him to finish Aizen off. However, after Hitsugaya charges in, Aizen provokes him to attack with all his hatred. Aizen mentions Momo Hinamori and if the hatred had disappeared because of her, and Hitsugaya furiously attacks him. Hitsugaya releases his Bankai as the other Soul Reapers join him. Kamamura, Love, Rose and Lisa join Hitsugaya in fighting Aizen, but all four are easily defeated. Sui Fong, Kairaku and Hiroko manage to confuse Aizen, allowing Hitsugaya to deal the final blow on him. As the Soul Reapers cheer on Aizen's defeat, a shocked Ichigo yells at them, asking them what they are doing. It is revealed that everybody except for Ichigo was under Aizen's Shirkai illusion and Hitsugaya had mistakenly stabbed Momo, while Aizen reveals himself to be acting as Momo. Enraged, Hitsugaya charges at Aizen but is cut down, his left limbs cut off. Sui Fong, Kairaku and Hiroko attempt to attack Aizen, but all are cut down as well. After defeating his oncoming opponents, Aizen stabs Yamamoto who then creates pillars of flames to trap him, which will kill not only Aizen, but everyone else in the process. However, Wonder Weiss appears and extinguishes Yamamoto's flames, revealing himself to have the ability to nullify Ryujin Jaka. Yamamoto and Wonder Weiss engage in unarmed combat, in which the former shatters the latter's body to pieces using hand-to-hand -hand techniques. As Yamamoto stands before Aizen again, Wonder Weiss unleashes the flames sealed in his body as he dies. Yamamoto uses his body to minimize the damage the explosion causes. Aizen approaches the immobile Yamamoto and prepares to finish him off, but Yamamoto uses his body as a catalyst for his Ido Keso, the forbidden Kido spell of sacrifice, and catches Aizen in the ensuing explosion. As Aizen manages to get away relatively unscathed, Ichigo attacks him. Ichigo, with his donned hollow mask, uses Getsuga Tensho to attack Aizen, wounding him in the process. However, it is revealed that Aizen has fused with the Hogyoku, which heals his wounded chest. It is revealed that all of the battles Ichigo has fought thus far were part of Aizen's plan, as such these battles are recapped. Aizen had been recording all of his battles and had set up the events that occurred up to this point as well. Aizen then reveals that he knew about him since his birth, trying to tell Ichigo he is part human, but his speech is interrupted by Ichigo's father, Ishin Kurosaki, in Soul Reaper form. After putting some distance along with Ichigo from Aizen, Ishin tries to tell his son that he will reveal the truth about his actions later, but Ichigo tells him that there is no need for that as he realizes he is indeed half Soul Reaper. Ishin then attacks Aizen, while Ichigo confronts Jin. While fighting Ichigo, Jin activates his Bankai, which allows him to extend his blade to great lengths, stating that he will not hold back unlike the last time they fought each other. Although Ichigo blocks his first attack, Jin charges at Ichigo with rapid attacks. Ichigo figures out that Jin's contraction speed is his weakness, but his extension speed is quite the opposite. Elsewhere, as the battle between Aizen and Ishin still rages on, the former reveals that he has reached the limit of his Soul Reaper self. Subsequently, the Hogyoku begins to reconstruct his soul. In shock, Ishin discovers through Aizen's statements the true power of the Hogyoku, which is to manifest the desires of all the people within its vicinity. As Aizen's transformation intensifies, Urahara arrives to participate in the battle. Urahara arrives to stop Aizen, paired a few tricks up his sleeve for the fight, including some special armor for Yoruchi when she later arrives as well. Urahara, Yoruchi and Ishin all engage Aizen, but with every passing second, he becomes stronger and changes his appearance due to being infused with the Hogyoku. Meanwhile the battle between Ichigo and Jin continues. Ichigo holifies and attacks Jin, but Jin slices off Ichigo's hollow mask. While Urahara, 
Yorochi and Ishin continue to fight Aizen, Ranjuku is seen by Izuru Kira running towards Jin. Uninterested in Ichigo anymore, Jin tells Ichigo to get lost. Just when Jin is about to kill Ichigo, Aizen appears behind Ichigo, revealing to have defeated Urahara, Yorochi and Ishin. Aizen and Jin leave to go to the real Karakura town. In the Dangai, they encounter the Kotatsu. Jin tries to tell Aizen it would be impossible to destroy it, and yet Aizen succeeds with a single blow. Ichigo and Ishin go into the Dangai after them. After realizing Aizen must have destroyed the Kotatsu, Ishin tells Ichigo he will teach him the final Getsuga Tensho. The Dangai reduces time to the point that if one were to stay in that world for 2000 hours, which is more or less 3 months, only 1 hour will have passed in the outside world, making it ideal for training purposes now that the Kotatsu has been destroyed. Ishin devises a method for Ichigo to learn the final Getsuga Tensho in 2000 hours in that world. To do that, Ichigo must directly contact his Zanpakuto. Once entering his inner world, he meets the spirit of his Bankai, Tensa Zangetsu, who refuses to cooperate with him and pulls out the source of his despair, which turns out to be Ichigo's inner hollow. Meanwhile, in the real Karakura town, Kigo Asano and Tatsuki Arisawa both wake up and wander through the town, pondering what has happened to them. Aizen finds and confronts Arisawa, paralyzing her with his spiritual pressure, while Jin lets Kigo run away. Tensa Zangetsu shows Ichigo his inner hollow, revealing to him it was the form he defeated Okuyora in. Zangetsu then joins with the inner hollow, revealing that they were one to begin with, and resumes his battle with Ichigo. Meanwhile, Don Kananji arrives between Tatsuki and Aizen and becomes determined to fight against him, that is until Ranjiku arrives just in time to stop him from getting killed. She instructs Kananji to take Tatsuki with him, whilst she and Jin go somewhere. As Tatsuki and Kananji reunite with Kigo, Jin wounds Ranjiku and rejoins Aizen in chasing after them. Some of Ichigo's classmates, Kananji and even Kurumadani make various attempts to stop Aizen but they all fail. Then, Jin returns and tells Aizen that he eliminated Ranjiku, and Aizen claims he will begin creating the Oaken after he kills Ichigo's friends. Jin then pulls a surprising move by grabbing Aizen's Zanpakuto and then impaling him through the chest. Jin reveals that the true ability of his Bankai turns his Zanpakuto to dust when it contracts and retracts, capable of leaving a lethal poison in one's body that dissolves it at a cellular rate. Aizen begins to perish as Jin escapes with the Hogyoku in hand. However, the Hogyoku, still belonging to Aizen whether or not it is inside him, evolves him to an even greater form as a result. Jin has a momentary flashback of when he first saw Aizen with Ranjiku unconscious on the ground, which encouraged him to kill the former. In the present, the newly evolved Aizen teleports to Jin's location and brutally slashes him across the middle. Jin recalls apologizing to Ranjiku after slightly wounding her from before and is satisfied with that. Before Aizen tries to kill Ranjiku, Ichigo shows up on the scene with his unconscious father over his shoulder. Jin, seeing the changed look in Ichigo's eyes, rests in peace, content with what he had done. Ichigo wishes to change the location of their fight and jumps at Aizen, grabbing his face and pushing him many miles away from the town. Aizen, still believing that he can easily defeat him, surmises that Ichigo has not lost his spiritual pressure, Rather he has, discarded soul reapers momentarily return to the soul society and begin to recuperate. It is shown that Anohara healed all of the wizards including Hayori, but ultimately it is up to her own will if she is to survive. Bayakuya and Kenpachi have defeated Yami in Hueco Mundo. Ichigo questions Urahara what Aizen's true motives might have been the whole time. When Ichigo reunites with his friends, he suddenly blacks out. In Central 46, Aizen is sent in the lowest underground level of the prison. Yamamoto, now without a left arm, is maddened that Bayakuya, Kenpachi and Kairaku lost their coats during their battles. Hitsugueya is seen training with his Bankai inside a cave, looking back at the incident when he accidentally stabbed Momo during his battle.
Anjaku is thankful that Jin never left a memento when he separated from her during his defection with Aizen. In Rukia's house, Ichigo wakes up after 10 days, and it is revealed that his hair length and body height have returned to normal. Having gone through the first couple of stages in losing his powers. It is only a matter of an undetermined time before he permanently loses them. However, Ichigo is mainly glad to see all of them alive and well. 17 months after the defeat of Sosuke Aizen at the cost of his Soul Reaper powers, Ichigo Kurosaki has been living in peace as a third-year high school student. On the way home from school, Ichigo incapacitates a thief and returns the stolen bag to its owner. The next day, the thief and his gang seek out Ichigo at his school and are confronted by Yuriu Ishida. Elsewhere, the owner of the stolen bag meets with his friends revealing he has found Ichigo. Ichigo and Yuriu dispatch the gang with ease but are interrupted when Ichigo's part-time job boss, Ikumi Anajiya, kidnaps and forces him to work. Their client, the owner of the stolen bag, requests an investigation on Ishin Kurosaki, Ichigo's father. Ichigo declines but is intrigued when the owner reveals that one of his younger sisters, Karen Kurosaki, had been visiting Kisuk Urahara. The owner introduces himself as Kugo Jinjo, gives Ichigo a Skushin business card and cryptically warns him to act before his family is hurt. Yuriu, passing by Ichigo's house, pursues a strange man and is critically injured as a result. While walking at night, Ichigo decides to forget his past and throws his substitute badge into the river. Later, he hears from Orihime Inoue that Yuriu is in the hospital. At the hospital, Ryukin Ishida sends Ichigo home and reveals to Orihime the assailant was a human with powers and cautions her to be careful. The next day, Ichigo's friends, Kigo Asano and Mizuiro Kojima, are attacked by the thief whom Ichigo had stopped prior. Ichigo saves them and meets Yuriu's assailant who flees when Ryukin arrives. Ichigo, realizing he is being excluded from information due to his lack of powers, decides to contact Skushin. After contacting Jinjo, Ichigo is led to the Skushin headquarters and learns its members possess the ability dubbed as Fullbrain, which allows them to manipulate the souls of inanimate objects. The cause of the power are residual spiritual energy from hollows who attack their pregnant mothers. Yasutora, Chad, Sado, who had been missing, appears at the headquarters, shocking Ichigo. Jinjo reveals that Skushin plans to restore Ichigo's soul reaper powers in order to rid themselves of their full bring abilities. Ichigo declines, stating that he is only seeking information his family and friends are hiding from him. Yuriu's assailant stabs an incomplete hollow and asks for its cooperation. Ichigo returns home and resumes his life. Chad attempts to convince Ichigo to accept Skushin's offer, stating that Ichigo himself wants the power to protect his loved ones. While walking through town, Ichigo sees Yuriu's assailant and pursues him but runs into his other younger sister, Yuzu Kurosaki, on the way. The Hollow attacks them and are saved when Jinjo dispatches it. As a result, Ichigo returns to Skushin and accepts their offer, and Jinjo returns Ichigo's substitute badge back to him. The next day, Ichigo is called into Skushin headquarters to learn how to use the full bring abilities. Ichigo is shrunken and placed in a dollhouse by Ruruka Dokugami, where he has to defeat an aggressive pig plushie under a time limit set by Jiriko Katsuzawa. When Chad advises Ichigo to use his pride, Ichigo uses his substitute badge as the focal item to materialize his full brain. Ichigo defeats the pig plushie with his full brain and is freed from the dollhouse. Elsewhere, Orihime is confronted by Mo Shishigawara, who intends to kill her. Shishigawara is then interrupted by his superior, Yuriu's assailant, who is revealed to be Shikuro Tsukishima. Tsukishima prepares to punish Shishigawara for going against his orders, but Orihime decides to intervene. Tsukishima pretends to impale Orihime's chest and leaves her. Although Orihime suffered no cuts, she starts having a vague idea that Tsukishima was her friend. Unwilling to worry Ichigo about what happened, she only tells Chad about Tsukishima. Aware that Orihime is hiding information from him, 
Ichigo goes back to Skushin headquarters and Gingo reveals that Tsukishima was Skushin's original founding member, but when they found a substitute Soul Reaper to transfer of some of their members' powers to Tsukishima killed him and the members involved in the transfer before disappearing. In light of Tsukishima actions Gingo decides to speed up Ichigo's training. Ichigo continues his training, but desires to actually battle one of the members of Skushin. Jinjo suggests that Jackie Tristan should be his opponent, but she refuses and storms off. Meanwhile, Tsukishima sends Shishigawara to tail Chad. However, while Chad is wary of Shishigawara's presence, no attack on him is attempted. Later, Jackie decides that she will fight Ichigo in a fish tank after seeing him pass his training in a bird cage, both set up by Ruruka. She fully introduces herself, activates her full brain using her boots and proceeds to attack a surprised Ichigo. Ichigo continues his training with Jackie. While at first Jackie overwhelms him with her more experienced powers, Ichigo is able to activate a power of full brain known as Bringer Light to gain the advantage. As they go on with the battle, Ichigo's powers go out of control, but insist that he can still fight despite Jackie's insistence that they stop. It is then that Tsukishima attacks Skushin, wanting to kill Ichigo. When Tsukishima cuts the fish tank containing Ichigo and Jackie, Ichigo appears, revealing the next stage of his full brain. Ichigo, Chad and Skushin start their battle with Tsukishima. The battle is taken outside when Chad attacks Tsukishima before he reveals he was the one who attacked Yuryu and Oriheim, but Ichigo finds it out anyway. Enraged he starts to battle Tsukishima, but the expert Foolbringer overwhelms him. Jinjo then gets in the way and battles with Tsukishima instead, the two being more evenly matched. Yet Ichigo, who cannot just stand there and watch, attacks again and is able to land a hit, but is stopped by Yukio Han's Voroburna, who then proceeds to stop Tsukishima himself. While Ichigo is fully protected by Yukio's full brain, Chad, Jinjo, and Ruruka successfully manage to force Tsukishima to retreat. The group then moves to their second hideout to ponder what Tsukishima's motives really were, but they soon come to realize that they have been overthinking this. While Oriheim heals Yuryu, the two discuss the new threat but are unable to figure out if all the incidents so far were from the same culprit. Oriheim later runs into Chad, who brings her back to the Skushin hideout to heal Ichigo, who has been training with Jinjo inside Yukio's full brain in a video game setting. Elsewhere, Yurahara and Ishin plan to collect spiritual energy inside a vat with the help of a soul reaper, who is none other than Rukia Kachiki. Ichigo continues his training with Jinjo while Oriheim heals him. Yet when Jinjo blinds him and starts to say antagonistic things to make Ichigo angry, Ichigo begins to doubt Jinjo's true intentions. When Jinjo claims that he will kill Chad and Oriheim, Ichigo is able to notice his spiritual pressure. Ichigo then manages to wound Jinjo with his full brain, reaching its final level, and Jinjo apologizes for his acting. After Ichigo achieves the final level of full brain, he spends his time perfecting it. With Skishin deciding to protect Ichigo so that they can complete their goal, Ruruka goes to search Chad and Oriheim, who are investigating Tsukishima. Ruruka ends being ambushed by Tsukishima, who attacks her with his full brain. Tsukishima then confronts Chad and Oriheim, who are unable to kill him as a result of his full brain causing him to be part of their memories. After Ichigo puts the finishing touches on completing his full brain, Jinjo tells him to go home to see his sisters, but Tsukishima activates his full brain that was placed on Ichigo's friends and sisters in order to make them believe that he is a close relative of the Kurosaki family. After running out, Ichigo encounters Jinjo, who tells Ichigo that all the other members of Skushin have fallen under Tsukishima's control. Ichigo and Jinjo, figuring out Tsukishima's full brain can manipulate the memories of the people he cuts down, are found out by Yukio, who brings them to Tsukishima's mansion. The two are welcomed by Ichigo's affected friends and sisters, but Ichigo, unable to fight with all of them in the crosshairs, runs away to a safer location, only to be stopped by the brainwashed Skushin. 
Jinjo destroys the staircase and takes on his fellow members himself while Ichigo fights Tsukishima. Ichigo is able to gain the upper hand with his full bring and severely injures Tsukishima's arm. However, Chad and Oriheim, also affected, arrive and stop him from finishing Tsukishima off, as they explain how he has been a part of their lives from the start. Chad and Oriheim, who believe Ichigo has gone crazy, try to prevent him from attacking Tsukishima, even when the fight is taken outside. Meanwhile, Jinjo, while confronting his fellow members, runs into trouble with Shishigawara and his lucky punches. An overwhelmed Ichigo is soon about to be slashed by Tsukishima, but Jinjo takes the hit instead. After Jinjo seems to be unaffected, Yuryu suddenly arrives and claims that Jinjo was his assailant instead of Tsukishima. Before Ichigo can react, he is stuck down by Jinjo, who reveals that he allowed Tsukishima to slash him twice to return to his original self. He stabs Ichigo with his sword and says he will take Ichigo's full brain. Jinjo is able to take Ichigo's full brain and apply its power to his own. Unable to do anything about his situation, Ichigo falls deep into despair and runs after Jinjo, demanding for Jinjo to give him his power back. Ichigo is then impaled by a sword held by Rukia which causes him to become a soul reaper once again. The sword is revealed to possess the powers from the 13 court guard squads in order to assist Ichigo in his fight against Jinjo. Ichigo attacks Jinjo with a Getsuga Tensho, which is powerful enough to clear away a thunderstorm and slice Tsukishima's mansion in half. Ichigo eventually overpowers Jinjo using his regained Soul Reaper powers, and he also learns that he regained his powers, thanks to the spiritual energies given by all of the captains and lieutenants. Toshiro Hitsugaya reveals that Jinjo was the first substitute Soul Reaper. Meanwhile, Chad and Oriheim rush to Ichigo, confused as to why Jinjo is being attacked. Tsukishima appears behind them and tries to break their minds by adding new memories to their past, but Urahara and Ishin knock them out. As promised, Jinjo gives the other Skushin members new powers of their own. Ichigo attempts to take them down, but Yukio uses his new powers to protect them and separate the others. Kenpachi Zaraki quickly takes care of Katsuzawa and cuts him in half, killing him instantly. Yuryu comes to assist Ichigo in his battle against Jinjo. Bayakuya Kuchiki prepares to start fighting Tsukishima while Ruruka ambushes Rukia using stuffed animals. Renji encounters Jackie and defeats her without the use of his Zanpakuto, having trained to fight an opponent at Aizen's level. As Yukio then attempts to destroy the dimension where Renji and Jackie are situated, he is confronted by Hitsugaya. Hitsugaya manages to capture Yukio in ice and attempts to force him to free his comrades. Meanwhile, Ikiku Matarame confronts Shishigawara, managing to find his fool brings weakness and overpower him. Tsukishima, revealing that he can use his full brain on inanimate objects as well, hits Bayakuya's Zanpakuto, thus learning all he needs to know about Bayakuya's weaknesses. Meanwhile, Rukia fights against Ruruka and gets her body trapped in a stuffed animal, and attempting to fight with Kido was ineffective. Ruruka tells about how the Foolbringers, through their tragic childhood pasts, were gathered together to form Skushin. Using this distraction as an opportunity, Rukia touches Ruruka with her Zanpakuto. But Ruruka, unable to dodge Rukia, uses a special ability from her full brain to vanish while causing Rukia to collapse. Meanwhile, Tsukishima is able to overwhelm Bayakuya and manages to inflict a serious injury. However, Bayakuya shoots out his Bankai from his hand, piercing Tsukishima's chest. Before Tsukishima falls to the ground, Bayakuya thanks him for an exciting battle. Ichigo and Yuryu continue their battle with Jinjo. However, when Jinjo senses that Tsukishima is near death, he tells Ichigo they have no longer have a reason to fight while revealing that the substitute Soul Reapers have been constantly spied on by the Soul Society to monitor their actions. However, using his Bankai to destroy the dimension with the other Soul Reapers looking on, Ichigo admits knowing about the revelation yet still intends to trust the Soul Society for aiding him in protecting the people close to him. 
This has Jinjo releases his own Bankai in response to Ichigo's resolve as the two have a final clash. The battle between Ichigo and Jinjo comes to a close when the latter receives a mortal wound. Just as Jinjo is about to die, the dying Tsukishima tries to kill Ichigo but is stopped by Ruruka as she emerges from Rukia's body. Shishigawa proceeds to carry Tsukishima away while the other surviving Skushin members decide to separate. Ichigo later returns to the Soul Society and requests that Genryusai Shigakuni Yamamoto let Jinjo's body be buried within the human world as the last thing he can do for him. Yamamoto agrees just as Ichigo accepts to continue being a substitute Soul Reaper. Rukia sees Ichigo off, recalling their time together and silently thanks him. Ichigo returns to Karakura town where he is greeted by his friends and family. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on what you thought. As well as let me know which anime series you want me to cover next time.